brothers and sisters, we are glad to be here with you again in uh, TAP Video Studios. And today our, we have a very special guest, a brother I've known for probably 40 years. Yeah, at least. At yeah. least. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to tell you a little bit about him. His name is Brother Leala Africa. Um, do you do you pronounce that Africa? Or? It's La Ila Africa. La Ila Africa. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Been in the health profession for over 40 years. Uh, his background includes working as a social worker, psychotherapist, group facilitator, community organizer, a nurse. You are a nurse. In the military, yeah. Ah, okay. And a natural path. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Africa has uh, a doctorate in naturopathic uh, medicine and is certified. He is a certified addictionologist. Mm, yeah. Uh... He's a certified acupuncturist and a massage therapist mm -hmm. and a licensed traditional healer in Ghana, Togo, and Benin. Welcome, brother. Thank you for inviting me, yes. Brother Clemson Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Now, for some reason, we always talk about melanin, and for some reason, I'm always, I got maybe 10, 20,000 tapes here, mm -hmm. and I'm always misplacing them. Yeah. And I, I would like to be up to date anyway. So okay. let's start out talking about melanin. Why is melanin, what is melanin, and why is it so important to the human family, and in particular to black people as we move forward to um, liberate ourselves in the 20th century? Melanin is a chemical, a biochemical, meaning it's a living thing, mm -hmm. and it's how we classify the races by how much melanin they make inside their body, not the melanin on your skin. It's how much you make inside your body. Mm -hmm. And we make the most melanin. Melanin is in your muscles, it's in your bones, it's in your nervous system and your digestive system. And it's the brain cell of cells in your body. It's the brain of all the cells in your body. And it keeps them all synchronized. It's like synchronizing the watch or something. You, it keeps everything coordinated, the kidneys, the lungs, the liver, everything has a cycle, and melanin keeps those cycles in order. The more melanin you have, the more intelligent you are. The more melanin you have, the more psychic you are. The more melanin you have, the more human you are. That's how we classify human beings by how much melanin they have. Mm -hmm. And black people are classified the highest on the scale of human Beings. We are number six, and the Europeans are number one. They have the least amount. Mm -hmm. We have the most amount. So that makes us more in tune with nature, in tune with God, if you were. Mm -hmm. And it's very important. So the, the way a drug works is by destroying melanin, speeding it up, or slowing it down. A drug that does not work on melanin is not a drug at all. That's the way drugs are made. And nonetheless, uh, because of the melanin, that makes black people rather unique. We're more creative. We're more scientific. We're more human. And uh, drugs destroy it, basically. Yeah, be the drug crack cocaine or the oil drugs called nicotine or cannabinol marijuana. Those are drugs. We just don't know what drugs are because we've been miseducated. As Carter G. Woodson said, we are totally miseducated in science, biology, chemistry, social science, history. We are miseducated, and that's very unfortunate. So we don't really know that much about ourselves or the world. So to study melanin is to study yourself and the world, and how it works defines everything. If a, if a planet moves, a melanin crystal moves at the same time. Now, define this, to study melanin, to study the world. Can you get a little more specific? Essentially, your body is reflected in everything you do. The wheel comes from your body. All instruments come from your body, aside from the camera coming from your eyes, and speakers coming from your ears, 
and nuclear reactors coming from your liver, if you want a machine, you got to look at the human body. It is scientifically put together. You want to build a boat, look at how they put the ribs together, and then you can build a boat. Everything comes from the human body. Everything. No machine on the planet Earth is not made from the human body. But we just don't see the human body when we look at a house or a church. Because you sit in a church and the center is called the naves, where you get the word navy from, where you get the word navel from. The church is built like the human body. Mm. If you don't understand yourself, you don't understand nature. We were in tune with nature, so a tree grows from the roots. It grows from the roots and it grows up, so we write from the bottom up. Makes sense to black people. Sun rises in the east, so we go from the right, start from the right, and go to the west. You follow what I'm saying? The sun sets. Yes. So we write that way. That's why we go left to right. That's why we're starting the page from the bottom up. We say, hey, that's the way the body grows. That's the way I'm going to write. Just made sense to us. When it comes to melanin and the hair, the hair as an antenna, um, where I'm trying to go with this is that uh, melanin enables us to pick up frequencies on so many different levels, like you have mm -hmm. an AM channel, you got an FM channel, but you can pick up uh, frequencies on the FM that you can't pick up on an AM. So looking at nature and how animals are able to uh, sense the hurricane is coming and they disappear. And right after the hurricane, they all come back out uh, and you wonder where they went. But we have a very similar ability. So I wanted you to talk about that. Uh, you, you're talking about how we synchronize with nature, yeah. essentially. And uh, it's just that we have lost a lot of those abilities. And that's probably what people don't get. Because when you move from the country to the city, you're going to lose the ability to understand at least 3,000 sounds. Mm -hmm. Somebody from the country can say, that's the sound of a deer, that's the sound of a raccoon, that's the sound of a leaf when the water strikes, that's the sound. Of... They have more sound intelligence, more color intelligence. So somebody from the country would put purple with yellow. You say they dress like they're from the country because they saw flowers growing like that. Uh -huh. You see? So we were more in tune with that, but we lost our color intelligence, smell intelligence, touch intelligence when we moved in the city. Mm -hmm. You see, we were just brought in because we were processors of burnt products. That's all we were trained to do, process products, whether it was in the coal mines or whether it was with automobile companies. That's all. So the other skills they didn't need, so you don't need that stuff. But so we lost our attunement, our relationship mm -hmm. with everything. Every disease has a smell. That's just simple. Yeah. Every, disease. Every disease has a smell. People with diabetes, their urine is going to smell sweet. They have a smell. Every disease has a smell. Cancer has a smell. This is what you were in tune with before we got away from nature. You said, oh, that smells like a rat. That smells like a bird. We knew the smells of animals, but we lost our smell intelligence when we moved in the city. Because mm -hmm. you can tell where, where a herd of a, what you call deer nesting at, because they nest in the woods, but you can smell them. See, I'm getting close to some deer, I better, because you step on one of them, all of them come at you. So we had all these intelligence. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this is not a foreign thing, it's just that we've been trained to process products, cotton, sugar cane, cars, tires, mm -hmm. coal. We just process the products. So we, uh, our owner said, you don't need that intelligence. You only need the intelligence I want you to have. Mm -hmm. And they call that the catechism, where they season us to just do our tasks. Like they did, they brought us from Africa, they didn't bring us actually. We fought all the way. There were wars fought all the way. When the white man stepped on the planet, we start fighting them. That's on the paler stone. I mean, we were fighting them all along. We had an illusion that we just started, no. We've been fighting them ever since we met them. That's what they do. But we lost all of those different intelligence because it wasn't needed because we were just producers of things. So they said, don't teach them. No, you don't need that. <laughs> you don't need that. Somebody's trying to teach you acupuncture, get a doll and stick pins in it. They said, don't do that. That's voodoo. But they were teaching you acupuncture with the doll, sticking the pins in it. Mm -hmm. yeah, you don't need that. <laughs> That's voodoo. So everything we, we had became negative. So we said, oh, don't do that. 
but it was part of our intelligence. Children knew how to do it. It's not a big thing, but we lost all that. We can't even smell a daffodil from a rose. Not now, nose is right on it, <laughs> mm -hmm. but you can smell cotton way away from it. I mean, you can smell these plants, but when you're close to nature, you know the smell of cotton, the smell of corn. It wasn't foreign to us. Right now, it seems like uh, smell intelligence. Yeah. Just like you can smell a rose, you can smell cotton. Mm -hmm. But it seems like it's foreign. So you can smell people. The East Indians smell different from the Arabs. The Arabs smell different from the Europeans. We just pick up on it when white people's hair gets wet. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying each race has its own smell. Mm -hmm. And because melanin has a sweet smell, we have a sweeter smell than other races. Mm -hmm. We just don't smell it because it's our, our feet. Our feet can stink, but we can't smell it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm saying we have our own smell because of the melanin. Mm. But we don't, we lost our smell intelligence. It's very sad. Wow. Mm. You said something. You said that uh, uh, black people, Africans, fought from the very beginning. Oh, the yes. European came. But most people think that we were enslaved. Because we sold ourselves nah. out to slavery. Nah. How, do you, how do you answer nah. that? And I, I, don't, I don't answer stupidity too well. I'm just saying we've been miseducated. That's all you have to know. Carter G. Woodson said we're miseducated, not only in history, chemistry, biology, acupuncture, totally. So don't think he was just talking about history. That's why he said it took him 20 years to get over his high school education. Mm -hmm. Mm. So I'm just saying, don't think uh, you read something in the book. If you read it written by somebody white, it's a miseducation. Mm. Totally. That's all you have to know. Mm. You were totally miseducated. No, we fought them. When we first saw them, a lot of African people started crying. Because mm. white people's skin is pink, and our skin is only pink when it gets scraped. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, you see the pink underneath there? So mm. the, a whole group of white, black people started crying when they saw white people say, what did they do so wrong that God didn't give them any skin? Mm. 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 What did they do that God didn't give them skin? Mm. So it was, it was a whole other thing because we confuse Europeans with Greeks. The Greeks are not the same as Europeans. That's true. So the Greeks built a wall to keep the Europeans out. So we study Greek history trying to understand white people. Some of the education, you got to study Greek history to understand Greeks and white history to understand cave people. They came mm -hmm. from the caves. So we don't know cave civilization, cave rituals. They brick up the walls in England. You can't even go in the caves in Nottingham. They bricked up. You go in there, they will lock you up. So we have no access to the, their history. history right. But they go to our graveyards and Chinese over in Egypt, and you know what I'm saying. They're, they're in there. They study us to market to us, to control us. Mm -hmm. But we don't study them. So how can you fight an enemy if you blindfold? Right, and you don't know the enemy and how the enemy uh, methodically does things. So you... Yeah, because we give them too much credit. They are not methodical. They are not that intelligent. They are not mm -hmm. whatsoever. We give them too much credit. If they got something, they stole it. Mm -hmm. Ice cream they stole, the shoemaking machine, bags they stole, mailboxes they stole, delivery system they stole. If they got something, they stole it. Mm. That's for sure. I often say that they are a product of the environment uh, in the ice, you know, the cold, uh, an environment that's austere, that's uh, uh, stingy, that's... Uh, I mean, they are white. Eskimos are not like that. Well, that's true. Eskimos are colored people. Mm -hmm. They got melanin. They're not like that, no. Uh-uh. You can't blame that one on the environment. Okay, I, I always saw it as, a, as an environmental, that they became no. the product of their environment. No, no. Eskimos are not like that, I'm telling you. <laughs> they're no. loving people, they share, and they're not, no. no, no. Well, how do, how do you account for their uh, character and, and, and their socioeconomic destruction of everything? Well, first of all, we have to understand that they don't know that much about the human body. Everything they have is a belief. The theory of evolution is a belief. A theory is a belief. 
mm -hmm. the theory of evolution. They're clear, they're writing their books. This is my belief. Mm -hmm. They have a belief about the brain, the Oedipus king, Oedipus complex. That's a story, that's a belief. They function under belief science and belief history. Mm -hmm. So we gotta get past that belief. They have an emotional problem and we think it's intellectual. How do I get them enough knowledge so they'll change their behavior? No, that's not gonna change their behavior. They have emotional problems, and only emotions change emotions. Then, how do we deal with them? I'm not trying to rescue them. <laughs> no. I, I'm just saying how I'm not trying. We deal with we study our like, own survival. We study cave history. Then we know how, where they come from, how they act. Because they wouldn't accept you into that. If I have a cave, you, I wouldn't accept you in it. No mm -hmm. way. Because I, I don't play fractions. That's Henry, Dr. Henry Clark would say, they don't play fractions, they want the whole damn cave. Mm -hmm. They don't want a part of America, they want the whole thing. They don't want part of Canada, they want the whole thing, because that comes from that cave mentality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We just don't study their origins, so everything they're doing is mystifying us. They have emotional illness, because a belief is an emotion. White supremacy is a belief, so it's emotional. Mm -hmm. Your culture gives you beliefs. From your beliefs, you get emotions. Reaction to emotions is called a feeling. You don't have feelings for Chinese music because you don't have Chinese culture. Mm -hmm. you, you follow what I'm saying? They have an emotional problem. We think it's a mental problem. We'll make some laws and they'll follow this and this is correct. No, they have an emotional problem and you can only treat emotions with emotions. Mm -hmm. You can intellectualize all you want to your wife about how this and that. She don't love the, your thoughts, she loves your emotions. Only emotions communicate to each other. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. No, you can't ex explain with mathematics how much you love your wife. Get out of here. If she don't <laughs> feel it, she don't feel it, you, it ain't working, man. <laughs> well, one and one is two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. That, that's intellectual. <laughs> but well, I, what I'm saying is we don't have enough information, we're studying the wrong thing. So we're gonna get the wrong solution. We have to study their culture like we study, they study ours. And we're not doing that. We have never done that. Right. We've right. never studied cave civilization. It's in my book, Nutritional Destruction of Black People. I wrote the whole history of their cave civilization. But I'm saying we never did that because we were miseducated. Mm -hmm. They are believers more than anything else. They, belief is a theory. Belief is a rule. We look at the Constitution as a book of rules. It's a book of beliefs. Mm -hmm. And beliefs are crystallized by rituals and ceremonies. There's only two behaviors, a ritual and a ceremony. Mm -hmm. I say hello to you. You say hello to me. That's a hello ritual. Mm -hmm. Now, if we add music to it and dancing, there's a hello ceremony. <laughs> you see? So yeah. there are only two behaviors. But we studying like is all this going on? Ain't all that going on? Not at all. These are Europeans. They just got out of a cave. You give them too much intelligence. They, they crawl to our level because they damn sugar wasn't walking. Yeah, absolutely. So we got to get back to really handling this issue if we want to solve it. But that's not for me. That's for future generations. Let me um, get back to melanin and and mm -hmm. the ability to be one with nature. Okay. Because that was the uh, African world um, view. belief yeah. view. Now you're getting that. We that. are one with nature. Yeah. In fact, the Africans believe that uh, energy could neither be created nor destroyed, and there's only the energy from infinity to infinity that permeates the same energy permeates the entire universe mm -hmm. from infinity and that is what we are and everything else is mm -hmm. that energy so essentially when the Africans say we are God mm -hmm. and they express that uh, that if you took a drop of water from the ocean put it under a microscope every element in the ocean is in the drop so we are cosmic drops. Every element in the cosmos is in us. And if you take the drop of water and put it back in the ocean, you have all the power of the ocean because the drop is now inseparable from the ocean. So it is the ocean. 
What I was trying to connect, because we are the cosmic drop, and our ancestors said that when you put the cosmic drop back so it is one with the universe, is through living my art, truth, justice, harmony, balance, because that way you remove the ego and the universe then speaks through you. It's not you who speaks. So the melanin, and this is the way I'm kind of looking at this, when I said that melanin helps you pick up these different frequencies since we are nature, mm -hmm. there's so many <clears throat> frequencies that go out and that attune us to our survival. And we will be able to pick those uh, vibrations up more readily than, say, a European, because the European is on one uh, end of the spectrum and the African on the other. So the European would represent death if you're looking at zero. And uh, <clears throat> if I, I'm hoping I've said enough for you to. Okay, I understand what you what you're saying. You're talking a belief. That's fine. I don't mind that. Africans have their belief. Chinese have their belief. No big deal about beliefs. The thing is that if you take a drop of water out of the ocean, your imprint is on it. It's not the same anymore, and it will not go back in the water like that again. Mm. That's that's just science. You have left your imprint on that water forever, all eternity, and we call that water the fluid of God. Om mons fluid, omnionic fluid. Mm. That's the fluid you are in before you're born. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about the holy waters. That's what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. So you're in this fluid of amon, which we call omnionic fluid, in your mother's uterus, because the baby is not in their mother, they're in themselves. Mm. We got to get our education straight. Now, how do you mean that? The, the placenta baby's... is made from the baby, not from the mother. Um, the placenta is like a skin shell that the baby's in. Mm -hmm. And inside this... She's a nurse, that's yeah. what I'm looking at. And inside this skin shell is fluid. Mm -hmm. The baby is like the yolk. I'm trying to explain to you. And the fluid is like the whites of the egg. And the sh placenta is the shell. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. And you are inside this shell made from you, not from the mother. You in the baby's inside the baby, essentially. So I'm saying we got to go. When you're talking this, we've been miseducated in chemistry, we've been miseducated in biology. So it's a lot, a territory. That's why Carter G. Wilson said it took him 20 years to get over his high school education, because all of this stuff you were told is totally wrong, okay. totally wrong. So the the thing is that there's nothing wrong with the Europeans being the Europeans. Nothing wrong with a daffodil being a daffodil. But God didn't put them together. That's the issue. Chinese were in China. Europeans were in Europe. We were never meant to be together. That's the problem. You putting things together that God did not put together. All right, but that's, what I'm that's saying, the problem. What I'm saying, since we have, since we are God, essentially, I mean, we're the energy of God. I mean, I yeah. see you frowning. Because here. you're looking at the world through your lens, and I'm saying that's not the lens. That is not, the, that's just your, your glasses. That's your prescription. Mm -hmm. The other prescriptions, no problem. I said, that's a belief, I understand that. But other people are looking at this world totally different. Bees don't see the world that we see. Certain colors, they don't see. Mm -hmm. They see a totally different world. Dogs see a totally different world from you. Europeans see a total different world from you. Their eyes are close together. Mm. I can see my hand out of the corner of my eyes. Mm. Asians are here. White people are here. Their field of vision is narrow. So if you walk over here and walk by them, they won't see you. You stand there and say, they walk right by me, they didn't see you. Because you are outside their field of vision. Mm. They see a whole different world from you. The arch of their nose is up high, so the world is always divided to them. Mm -hmm. You see, what mm -hmm. I'm saying that they, they see differently. Flowers that see different from bees, bees see different from elephants. We all see a different world. This universal thing you're talking about is not that. It is not that. We see a different world, and the Europeans can never see our world. We have a wider field of vision. You start driving in traffic with these people, you say, what the hell is he driving around like this? They almost hit me. What's wrong with these Asians? 
because they have a narrow field of vision. They didn't see you. <laughs> they didn't see you. <laughs> That's what the problem is. We, it's no universal thing here. That's our problem. We see a bigger world than they do. We smell differently from they do. Melanin helps you smell. Melanin makes you taste food differently from Europeans. A black person combines food differently from white people. Even if they use the same recipe. Because we taste differently from them. We smell differently from them. We see differently from them. We touch differently from them. That's for us. But don't try to put that on the Europeans. Don't ask a dog to be a rat. Forget that one. Okay, well, my concern always is how do we survive in, in the state that we're in where we are not really in control? It's not going to happen at all until you get away from the Europeans. That's what I'm saying. You weren't meant to be with them. Stop fighting nature. Get the hell away from them. That's the only way it's going to happen. You're fighting nature. You're fighting nature. How can we survive with these people? The tigers don't ask how can they survive with the deer. The deer get the hell away from them. <laughs> it's not a question in nature. Nature doesn't question itself. Is it? I'm bees. I'm staying in my beehive. They don't say, oh, let's go over here with the rats. <laughs> Please, <laughs> no. no. No animals, no flowers. Nothing is doing this. Nothing. <laughs> but we come along, we African people. How can I get along? No. <laughs> That's, you're putting things together that God hasn't even put together. Wow. That's what I'm saying. It's, it, milk doesn't go with Wheaties. It's not one titty full of Wheaties and one titty full of milk. It doesn't go together. Nature didn't put it together. God didn't put it together. Why are you putting wheat with milk? What you doing? You're going against God, so you pay for it. When you go against God, you pay for it. That's why we have these problems. You're putting things together that don't go together. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to down, diverge a little bit. Diverge? I don't mind swimming all kinds of seas. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Can all diseases be reversed? Dis-ease. I'm not at ease with this conversation. Or I'm, so I'm dis-ease with this conversation. All you're talking about is, am I at ease? Are you at ease when you're sick? No, you dis-ease. That's all you say. So can you say, can I get you in a relaxed state? I say, yeah, get you, in a relax, get you the hell out of the stress. I reverse your disease. <laughs> you're no longer dis-ease. You're at ease now. That's what you're asking me. But we've been taught that the disease is, what are you talking about? You are at ease or you're dis-ease? I had a heart attack about Two months ago, can't mm -hmm. uh, Spent a couple of weeks in the hospital. Um, been trying to recuperate and establish my, uh, get back again my strength and so forth, mm -hmm. which is why I asked you that question um, that put me on a lot of medications, five of them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and essentially said that um, the state that I am in is pretty much the best that I can look forward to. They can maintain the state, but they can't restore me. My heart is 20% and it will never pump again at uh, At 100%. 60, yeah, uh, or 100%. 100%. Yes. You'll never be six years old is what you're saying. I got it. Yeah, so yeah. I'm, I, I don't accept it, <clears throat> don't believe it, and I'm trying to find a way to get back to my, uh, to the full integrity of my... Uh, uh, yeah, you're trying to live. <laughs> That's what you're saying. I'm trying yeah, to live. Right. I, got, I got your premise here. <laughs> 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 uh, I understand that. Uh, Melanie. If you're, if, you're, if you're alive and you're breathing, and you're able to sit here in this conversation, the body has a very resilient way of healing itself. No one can dictate how the body heals itself, mm. but God. Mm. And as you say, we're one with God. So if you change your eating habits, if you take the herbs from the earth to help your heart, mm. you understand? You just take the stress levels completely out of your life as much as you can, you can get better. 
I have had a mother who had a stroke and an aneurysm and they told her she wasn't going to live. And I sat in the hospital and they allowed me to take raw herbs. And I, is it called the pedestal and statement? Mortar and pistol. The mortar and pistol. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I Pulse. did, I did, I pulverized her herbs in front of them and I put it in her feeding tube and she came back seven days later where she was unconscious. They said that she was gonna, she only, only had a couple days to live and she's still with me today, mm -hmm. 21 years later. Wow. You can, you can get better. You dictate and God dictates mm -hmm. your recovery. Mm -hmm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So it, to me, this is a conversation that you have with yourself and say, I'm not going to go until it's time for me to go. And I'm going to do all the things to assist my body in getting well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there are herbs out there. Dr. Africa, you know, he deals with them on a daily basis. There are herbs out there that can help you. Mm -hmm. the, you're a miracle. You sit near, right? I mean, most people don't come back from them. So obviously, something, you have a, a curative factor within you. You're, you're exemplifying it right now. So who is anybody to tell you this is, the, this is as good as it's going to get? You can only say that if you made it. You didn't make it. They didn't make it. So you can. You can get better. Yeah. I've seen it. No, I still I still I see it. My mother is still yeah. alive one. They can't believe it. They <laughs> said she had diabetes and then her A1C went to normal mm -hmm. through herbs. Mm -hmm. And it was proven because they took a test. So the test proved her numbers were high and then a couple months later her numbers went low. So that's a uh, objective measurement in which mm -hmm. they believe. Mm -hmm. They believe numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So you can do it. Absolutely. Um, I'm used to running around the world, as you know, and mm -hmm. I got a lot more work to do. Yes, you do. <laughs> You're in everybody's business. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, basically strengthen the heart muscle. We use hawthorn berries to do that strengthen the heart muscle itself. Mm -hmm. Most of the time when things go wrong is with the left chamber of the heart. That's the part, the chamber that pumps the blood up to the lungs to pick up the oxygen. Mm -hmm. That's the one that gets big. And when it gets big, it gets big outside and inside and, and narrows the amount of blood you can get. Mm -hmm. It's a muscle and now bodybuilders make the muscle big. You made that muscle big and it narrows the chamber of blood that can get, go into it, so it shortens your blood supply. Because you were doing it under stress, that's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Now the heart pumps the blood, but it doesn't pump the blood all the way down to the feet. That's a whole myth that we believe in. It only pumps it maybe around a foot away from itself, and then the rest of it is carried by muscles. So we're looking at the muscles activity. So people have rheumatism of those muscles. Anything that goes with the big muscles go with the small muscles. Mm -hmm. Usually, what you put in your mouth is the factor, because slaves didn't die of heart attacks. That's true. So what were they doing? <laughs> they were eating over 30 different wild herbs. Mm -hmm. People say they're eating the soul food diet, but they're not eating the herbs. They went with that diet. Mm -hmm. Maple leaves, you follow me? Slippery elm bark. You may have heard of these things. Yes. Yeah, dandelion salads, poke salad. They were eating a tremendous amount of wild herbs to go with that diet. They say, I'm under stress. I better get, get this mucus out of my heart. Poke, we use for that. So they were taking herbs to eat with this diet, if, mm -hmm. you, want to, if you want to call it that. So they were always doing a self-defense thing against the food. But we're just eating the food, but not doing a self-defense thing that our ancestors were doing with the herbs. I don't want to get too complicated. No, no, explain. I mean, run it. Yeah. So what we're talking about is the heart and how it became stressed. Because we know that the body is not stupid. The heart is not going to attack itself. That alone is dumb. You attack itself and kill itself? No. The heart says, no, you attack me. I didn't attack you. You didn't have a heart attack. You attack your heart. Mm -hmm. And the attack was you weren't taking these herbs in a preventive state like your ancestors was doing. They were picking sugar cane and cotton and all that. Mm -hmm. 
We just thought they were stupid, you know, oh, there's old people. But the, we know that so many worms come with ham, and we know cloves kill worms. So we, they put the honey on the ham, and the worms come up to eat the honey, and the cloves kill them. <laughs> That's why they had those little things on the mats look like on ham. And they put the honey on it and put the clothes in it to kill the worms. They were doing a lot of preventive stuff that we are not doing. We just said, oh, that's just some silliness. No, no. They know there's a lot of worms in this pork. Put some clothes there. And the clothes will kill them. So I'm just saying all those preventive things that our ancestors were doing to go along with a devastating diet, we're not doing. And so now we just got to go Sankofa, go back and retrieve this stuff that they were doing. That's, that's, I'm just trying to say that, that many things we were doing. So they know that the, 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 the liver's going to take away the stress on the heart because the liver's going to break down fats from fried foods, baked foods. So they said, let me take something for my liver, dandelion. You, you heard of dandelion salad and poke salad? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying they were doing no, all... No, 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 that's what we, we did when we were on the phone. Yes, that's what I'm saying. They were doing preventive things to compensate for this heck of a diet that these Europeans were shoving at us. Mm -hmm. that we don't do. We just do the soul food, but what about the herbs that went with that? Mm -hmm. That's all I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there are things that can do, be done. We can relieve all that fat that gets dumped on the heart on Monday morning, <laughs> usually. <laughs> and during the weekend, people, you know, party, look at basketball and drink a lot of slop. So on Monday mornings, that's when the heart gets all this stress. You can get up. <laughs> no, that's when all that stuff gets dumped on your heart. Usually the heart attacks usually occur between 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning in the hospitals because mm -hmm. that's when your body's at its lowest and can put up the least amount of fight against the crap. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that's usually when the heart attacks occur. So we do the hawthorn berries to strengthen the, strengthen the heart. Mm -hmm. We don't use rat poisoning, which you call Coumadin, which thins the blood. Because mm -hmm. they're trying to say the heart needs help and it needs hit quick. So they say, well, the only way to get it quick is to make the blood thin. So if they give you blood thin, they call a uh, rat poison, which they call Coumadin. And the body rushes to get rid of it and thins the blood. So that takes the stress off the heart. Because thick bl blood takes a lot of muscle to move. So right. if we thin the blood, it's less stress on the heart. And we use what people call curry powder, turmeric. I don't know if you... Yeah, yeah. turmeric. I'm saying those are blood thinners. Yeah, I take turmeric. I'm saying that's what I said for doing turmeric, mm -hmm. which they call curry powder, ginger root, mm -hmm. blood thinners, yeah. horseradish, blood thinners. They were taking a heck of a lot of things as preventive, but we're not doing all that stuff. So you got to do the blood thinners. That's ginger root, um, horseradish, black radish, red radish. I'm, not, I'm trying to name things that people can get without you know, going through a whole lot of changes. Mm -hmm. And we do know fruits thin the blood. All fruits, cucumbers, it doesn't matter if it's a fruit, it's going to thin the blood. They didn't put cucumbers in the salad because of decoration. They were fighting against that crack. I mean, they were fighting against the white dye that was given to them. So, 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 they, they, so they put the cucumbers in the salad. They were doing a lot of things. We just, you know, I said, those old, those, old, those old people, they do that. It's like my grandmother. She say. I'm doing something bad. She said, go get me the switch so I can switch your bad behavior to good behavior. Mm -hmm. They didn't say, uh, get a stick. They said, go get me the switch. <laughs> like, I'm going to switch this behavior. <laughs> and we just say, oh, old people say that. No, then that's something. They're going to switch your bad behavior to good behavior. Get me the switch. <laughs> no, I, I, I know about it. <laughs> yeah, because that's what you got. You got to switch. Right. You, you got to switch from your heart. So I'm going to switch your bad behavior to good behavior. <laughs> Uh, tell us some other things he can do, uh, you know. Dr. Africa has his own product line where he has developed, um, I'm going to say around 27 formulas, mm -hmm. and you can get them in powder form and you can get them in capsule form. Mm -hmm. And so he has it for the heart, he has it for um, diabetes, he has it for high blood pressure, mm -hmm. thyroid, all the things that plague our black community. So if you want to do that, you can also go that route where it's already mixed. All you have to do is just take it, which that's the hardest part is patient compliance. <laughs> now, tell everybody uh, how to hook up with your product line. You can um, go on our website and it's lailaafrica.com. So that's L-L-A-I-L-A, -L -A -L -A, mm -hmm. A-F is in freedom, 
A-F-R-I-K-A dot com. His name, LaelaAfrica.com. And he has an assortment of his products and he has his books there. And he also has some of his audios and videos if you want to be educated. Mm-hmm. Or you can go to YouTube. Because <laughs> I got a lot of good stuff on YouTube. I know. <laughs> I'm glad to see you there now. <laughs> That's let, really refreshing. Let me, uh, why are you there? Now, Viola has another problem. Hers is long psychosis. I have I have COPD. And Chronic I have, obstructive pulmonary disease. Mm-hmm, yes. Just the usual black things. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it's just a, just a scratch record talking to black people. <laughs> to me, nothing personal. You know. <laughs> Everywhere I go, this is what goes on. We're under the same oppression. They, they say the black experience, mm-hmm. right? right. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is say that the lungs are stressed. Mm-hmm. Now we know that oil goes to the lungs. So when people smoke, the smoke is carrying the oils, which they call nicotine. Mm-hmm. The smoke is carrying the cannabinol, and all that goes to the lungs and clogs them up. Well, we know that. Mm-hmm. We know that things that pull the moisture out of tissue pulls the moisture out of lungs. So you can't eat salt, because salt is going to pull the moisture out of the tissue of the lungs, pull the moisture. That's what salts do. Or sugar, it does the same thing. It pulls the moisture out of the tissue of the lungs. So you can't use these preservatives, as they're called, Mm -hmm. because it's robbing your body of moisture, which is robbing your lungs of moisture. Mm -hmm. Now, the lungs are not doing anything wrong. Get that straight. God's trying to protect you. He's not doing anything wrong. It's just that people pee in their lungs. I'm just being kind of graphic. Mm. The body carries waste out that it can't get out the body through peeing and a bowel movement. It says, well, I can only pee through the lungs. That's snot. That's the body carrying waste out through snot. Mm. And the body carries the waste out and dumps it in your lungs. Mm. <laughs> you see? And it says, I, I, that's the way I got to get the waste out. So it dumps it in the lungs, and then you cough to loosen it up and throw it out. Mm. That's why I said you just pee in through your lungs. Mm. So we got to increase the efficiency of the kidneys to get rid of this waste so it don't have to go to the lungs. Mm. You see, so you need something for the kidneys. It sounds, I'm trying to draw the picture here. You say, lungs, I better take something for cough and cold. I'm saying, no, you got to take some for your kidneys because your kidneys going to get rid of the waste so it won't be dumped into the lungs. Mm. So I'm, I'm, it sounds like I'm going around the, the bin, but I'm really not. So you have to get away from the salt because if you crave salt, you got to crave sugar. If you crave sugar, you got to crave salt. That's why they have salt and sugar in every candy bar. Mm. Yes. You can't have one without the other. So if you crave sugar, you want some salt. You want some salt, you crave sugar. So you got to get off of those two because that's going to pull more shit out of the tissues of your lungs. You got to strengthen your kidneys so they can transport the waste so they won't try to dump it into the lungs. Because mm. we always associate uh, lungs as breathing, but you don't breathe through your lungs. You only breathe when the, when the oxygen's in the blood. You breathe mm-hmm. through your blood, not through your lungs. Mm-hmm. So that's part of our miseducation. Because we actually think we hear with our ears. You hear with your brain. Mm-hmm. The sound is picked up and put in the blood, and the blood takes it to the brain, and the brain hears. You hear with your brain. You see with your brain. You touch with your brain. You taste with your brain. Mm-hmm. So we got that's part of our miseducation I was telling you about. Mm-hmm. So the main thing is that the brain is a part of this, because you breathe through your brain. The biggest organ organ that takes the most oxygen is your brain. Mm-hmm. See, so when you're starving for oxygen, your brain's starving for oxygen. Mm-hmm. And the brain says, I'm starving. I need more nutrients. So it says, I better step up the estrogen because estrogen holds moisture and nutrients. Mm-hmm. So it's going to throw your hormone level off. Mm-hmm. You see, so I know I got to balance your hormone level because that's been thrown off. Mm-hmm. It's just basic kind of science. Anything that's different has a different pH, as they call it. P is potential, H is hydrogen. What is hydrogen's potential to be acid or alkaline? So anything that's different has a different pH, has a different vitamin and mineral, protein, and hormone ratio. Mm-hmm. So I had to balance that ratio because you suffer with the wrong ratio because the body says, I'm in a crisis. If I'm in a crisis, I'm going to go die of stress. Not only explain die of stress, you do much better with it than I do. I get involved with things. Uh, Thanks, doctor. <laughs> When you're under dire stress, um, your digestive system says, I'm not going to digest food. Your immune system says, I can't fight disease. That's the I in dire stress. She's just saying P. The R in dire stress is your um, reproductive system. 
you're not going to reproduce anything. Mm -hmm. And you really, when you're under stress, most sane people don't want to have sex either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then um, your E is your excretory system. Your excretory system is the ability of your body to be able to excrete waste. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you get sick, the mm -hmm. body is nothing wrong with the body. It's that you're under stress and it's turned off. If mm -hmm. you turn that camera off, can it take? No. It can only tape when it's turned on. Yes. So when the body's under stress, it can't tape. Mm -hmm. It can't digest. It can't fight immunity. Mm -hmm. It can't reproduce. It can't excrete waste because it's turned off. You have mm -hmm. to come out of the stress. And when you come out of the stress, then you can digest the food. Mm -hmm. Then you can fight disease. Then you can reproduce. Then you can excrete waste. You understand? Mm -hmm. So it's the, it's the matter of it's not whether the body is actually working, it's whether it's turned on or off. Mm. And under mm. dire stress, mm. those systems turn off and say, I need to get you out of stress. Mm. I don't have time for digestion. Mm. I don't have time for immunity. I don't have time for reproduction. I don't have time to excrete waste. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference between being in stress and out of stress. And a lot of people get sick because they're under stress. And if you're under stress for long periods of time, say if you've been under stress for six months, your digestive system hasn't been working for six months. Mm, wow. Your immune system hasn't been fighting disease for six months. Mm. Your reproductive system has not been able to reproduce anything for six months. You haven't been able to take the trash out in your body. Your excretory system hasn't been able to take the trash out in six months. And then some people say, well, I've been under stress for the past two years. Mm. And then they wonder why they fall ill. Mm. It wasn't because it was something wrong with the body. It was because the body was trying to get them out of stress for that solid six months or that solid year or two years. Body is only going to do one thing at a time. Mm. You mm. want me to digest this food? Get out of stress. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing both of them. Mm -hmm. And when you understand that you pick when you want to be stressed and when you don't want to be stressed. And a lot of times you don't want to be because you know, if I'm stressed, my body can't do what I need it to do on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we just violate ourselves and then we decide that it's the body that does something wrong with us when the body is simply just trying to switch to another program to heal us. Mm -hmm. Can't do two things at once. Mm. That's our whole people. Mm. That's, that's, that's our culture. That's, that's our right now. And if you keep we us are under, all stress, under stress, that's right. And then you say, how can we help each other? Okay, so how can I give you a sane answer if I'm under stress? How can I make a sane decision if I'm under stress? Mm -hmm. Their job is to keep you under stress. So you're saying, well, what do we do? Well, the most logical thing is to come out of stress, but how do you do it? You separate yourselves and you reconstitute yourself. Mm -hmm. Who has time for that when they're trying to be like the oppressor? Mm -hmm. When you're chasing a carrot, mm -hmm. you can't chase the carrot and be free too. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Can't do it. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> there you go, Dr. Uh, stress is a factor, and um, it's not just stress. You got many ways to turn on stress. Somebody going to call you the N-word, that's stressful. So now you wanted to die of stress again. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? There's many ways. You, you listen to a sound that's over 90 decibels. That's a stress. That turns on dire stress. Somebody cuts in front of you while you're driving. That's a dire stress. You cuss somebody out. That's a dire stress. So you keep turning on the stress, and eventually the digestive system gets weak, gastric reflux reaction, the immunity system gets weak, chunga, you follow me? Mm -hmm. Virus, which you call AIDS, all of that's because your immune system is crashed. Mm -hmm. Then your reproductive system gets weak, fibroid tumors, prostate disease, then your respiratory system gets weak, kidney dialysis. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So mm -hmm. we're turning it on with all these things, but we just think it was just, oh, the only reason why I got stressed because, uh, you know, I got fired. No, you got stressed when you were dreaming about being fired because Negroes dream about being fired. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> they do, they're always preparing for some war that never takes place. Mm -hmm. You know, because most of the time people, Imagination gets them in problems. Mm -hmm. I had an imaginary conversation with Clemson Brown, you know? And then when I meet him, he start talking. I said, that's not what you said in my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> now that stressed me. 
Because we do all of these things. We have these pretend conversations with people. I said this, you're going to say this. I said this, you know. And it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that stresses us. Yeah. So we're not looking at all these different routes to stress. We just think it's one road. I'm saying, no, it's many roads to that. Mm -hmm. You just drank some uh, alcohol. That stressed your system. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. drank a Coke. And Coca-Cola is phosphates. And phosphates are known as phosphoric acid. And phosphoric acid is lye. You just drank some lye. That's why I burnt your throat. That stressed you. We're not looking at that. We say, oh, it's a Coke. I want a real Coke when I'm strong. You want some lye? You want to drink some lye? Mm. That's what phosph phosphoric acid is. It's a lie. And people go to the store and buy lye. That stresses the whole system. Mm. So it weakens the digestive, weakens the immunity. And they're not viewing that Coke is stressing their system. Mm -hmm. You see, they're just viewing I didn't get the latest iPad. Mm. You follow me? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the, the, the thing is that uh, we are miseducated in science, miseducated in history. Mm -hmm. All of this is just too much for you. You can't be the village. Mm -hmm. Everybody has to do their job the blackest they can. Now, African-centered is the word is today, as they can. Because we need everybody to get out of this thing. We, you know, historians can't do that. We had the preacher run for a while, Jesse Jackson, is that Jesse Jackson? Yes. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get all of them, Al Sharp, you know what I'm saying, yeah, Martin Luther King, we, Malcolm X, they were all preachers. We tried to preach a thing. Mm -hmm. So we had to let that one go. Mm -hmm. we, we tried the entertainers thing, because entertainers used to rule us. You know, we go to entertainers. Muhammad Ali was entertainer. Mm -hmm. Went to all these entertainers to saw, you remember Sammy Davis Jr. Harry Belafonte, they are entertainers. Mm -hmm. Entertainers haven't got us out of this. Preachers haven't gotten us out of this. We need to find another way. Mm -hmm. You just can't play a basketball game with one play. Mm -hmm. you, you follow what I'm saying? We're mm -hmm. using the same play over and over again. I'm saying, no, 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 no. We got to get another play here. <laughs> and the play is to be holistic again, to be holy. Mm -hmm. which is what we're talking about, whole, with one, with God, with the universe. That's the only play. You got to be a whole person to fight a whole disease. You got to be holy. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were talking about, the cosmicness and all of that. That meant to be whole. And that's what the body plays. It's a simple thing to visualize, but the body doesn't know anything about a damn raisin. The body only knows grapes. It only knows what God made. Mm -hmm. So if you eat a raisin, the body says, I don't know this, so I'm going to put the water back into this raisin, turn it into a grape first, and then I'll digest it. Mm -hmm. That's, we call it rehydration in science. You, you ate a wheat berry with no water in it. Mm -hmm. You call it bleach white flour. That's a berry. Berries have water. Mm -hmm. So you ate the berry, the bleach white flour, the body says, well, I only know wheat berries, so I'm going to put the water back in this, and so it robs it out of your bones, your nerves, your muscles. Oh. Mm -hmm. To rehydrate it. That's okay. the problem. Okay. So uh, the reason why we do that is because we're on a military diet, because the Europeans are military. They're always mm -hmm. fighting. They're fighting today somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, and all the targets are black. Yes. We only practice on black targets in all militaries. So it's a reflux reaction to kill a nigger. I mean, kill someone who's black. Because <laughs> we practice on these targets in the military. Mm -hmm. So it's a reflex. You, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So we got our reflex is to be whole, be holy, to be one with God. That's our thing. Get with that, and then you talk in revolution. Because back in the 60s, when we were more black than we are now, to me, that's mm -hmm. another subject, the guy said, if you're not ready to turn around and kill your mother, don't get in this revolution. Mm. Don't even get in it. Because sometimes your enemy is your family. That's true. Mm. So sometimes you just got a clean house. You say, well, I guess I'll get rid of King Simon, you know, something like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Nothing personal, bro. <laughs> Put that out. <laughs> 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 got, got to go. <laughs> they will do it. They will do it. Stay neutral and focus. <laughs> stay neutral and focus. And, and I train every day, just in case you do want to come. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, Dr. Yeah, Afro, yes, sir. I'm just going to ask you one more question. Uh, I'm, I'm sensitive to the time, but I did want to deal with Henrietta Lacks mm -hmm. and the 
emotional sales that she has. Yeah. And I wanted to know what's your insight. Um, I have a theory that I'd like to throw out, and then I'd like mm-hmm. you to um, yeah. give me some commentary. Uh, okay. Because the, they've found what other you find? black folks with those same sales in Africa. Mm-hmm. So, can you speak on it? We're talking about Gila cells. H-E-L-A, named after Henrietta Lacks, a black lady from Baltimore. Mm -hmm. They took her cancer cells, I think it was in 1950 or so. And we keep them alive by feeding them sugar and growth hormones. That's not a big deal Mm -hmm. to keep cells alive. We do that. We call them stem cells. And we keep them alive. That is not a big deal. But we're trying to corner the market because everything is a fashion. Sometimes the dresses up high, sometimes down low, but it's always the same dress. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's a fashion. The disease industry is a fashion industry. Mm. The car industry is a fashion industry, whatever the fashion is. So don't think of it as foreign. Henry, that's a fashion. This guy said, you got to get this Mercedes Benz or your stuff ain't going to work. So everybody runs and gets the new Apple. Mm-hmm. And that's all it was about. It's not all that deep and heavy. This guy knew how to market his stuff. So, so we keep cells alive. That's not a big thing. But he said, no, you need this black cell. So you, 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 you can make it head. Cause, <laughs> cause you, know, you know niggas had the best milk because that's why black mammies were popular. The milk from black women. And then you need a mammy. And, you know, that's the best milk. And if, if he and I suck on the same breast, then we bosom buddies. You follow what I'm saying? I'm following. Yeah. So I'm just saying don't. Don't get confused. This is a fashion. This guy cornered the market and said, no, these, you need those Negro cells. Not Marilyn Monroe. You need Henry Lax. That's just jive. So nonetheless, the thing is that it's based on a theory, which is a belief. In European medicine, the belief is if I make you sick, I can make you better. So to get rid of flu, I give you the flu. Call it a vaccination. If I get rid of measles, I give you the measles. So anyone that's had a, a flu shot is contagious for two months after that. And they send them to school. Kids walking around with flu, flu in them. Mm-hmm. The active flu virus, they put it in them. Yes, Because the Europeans believe in order to make you better, I have to make you sick. Mm-hmm. To drink alcohol makes you sick. We're taught if you drink alcohol, it makes you feel better. But to drink alcohol makes you sick. We only count drunk, but their degrees of drunk. I got a high on. I'm feeling good. You're still drunk. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying we. It's a, a, our miseducation again. So what I'm saying is that these cells are used to prevent a person from having the disease. Mm-hmm. To stop you from having cancer, I give you cancer. You stand around as an African person, you say, wait a minute, maybe you ought to give me an apple, a papaya, a mango. (laughs) Hold on here. (laughs) But our belief is to make you better, I have to make you sick. And you're coming out of that whole belief of the Europeans. And I'm saying that don't wash at all. And you, you couldn't, you couldn't, all we know is in natural medicine, if I can't give it to a baby, I can't give it to you. Mm-hmm. You would not put vinegar in a bottle and give it to a baby. You would not put alcohol in a bottle and give it to a baby because those are poisons. Mm-hmm. You follow me? If you can't give it to a baby, you don't take it. Mm-hmm. Very simple. Because they just came from the spirit world. They close, you follow me? They, they, yeah. They're very spiritual. Babies would be laughing at spirits and stuff. You say, what are they laughing about? <laughs> they're still in the spirit world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. And you come in the room and they start crying. Oh, niggas. You know? <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? <Nothing> personal. <laughs> so um, what, what I'm saying is we got to get back to being cosmic conscious and holy because it doesn't make any sense whatsoever to make somebody sick in order to make them healthy. Mm-hmm. You cannot tell someone I'm making you feel better by making you sick. Get here, drink some alcohol. No. Uh, the whole concept is <sighs> we need to be by ourselves because to be around it, <laughs> you ain't going to make it because they come in all the, the back door, the roof, the basement. You know, they come in all these different ways to take the blackness out of us. Yes. That's why we, we say scat singing. We know Latin word for scat is shit. Mm. It means that. 
So they call our singing scat singing. Mm. So I'm just saying they're coming in that way. That's true. It's obviously because we get so stressed around. We don't know we're going to get fired, laid off. Or I think that's what you say, laid off or laid. I don't know. Because <laughs> you know they rape you wherever you go. You go to church, you get raped. Go to school, you get raped. That's always been built in that culture. Mm. You're an athlete, you get raped. You know this. Go to Catholic church, you're going to get raped. Go to school, you're going to get raped. Mm. You know, mm. that's built in. We call it rape. But in our culture, prostitution is a form of rape. Mm. So you're getting paid. <laughs> that don't stop it from being raped. That's right. And I, so I give you a dollar and punch you in the mouth. I said, you can't say I punch you in the mouth, you got paid. <laughs> no, you punch me in the mouth, nigga. <laughs> no, you got paid. <laughs> yeah. yeah, please. I'm losing my voice now. We need an African timeout. You know, we need to take time to ourselves. You know how you give a child a timeout? We as African people need a timeout. Mm-hmm. so that we can reconstitute ourselves, mm-hmm. whether or not that's going to happen. We're going to get time in. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. You're right. Oh, you yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Greetings <laughs> to the family. <laughs> you know, of course, we, we, we have the great ones in the building. I call this rolling with the elders and the legends because mm-hmm. when you have Minister Clemson Brown and Dr. Mm-hmm. Africa and Dr. Melanie, oh, mm-hmm. my goodness, it's trouble. <laughs> and, you know, I, let me tell you something. Make sure you go to his, uh, take his classes if you can, because yeah. he's, he's not going to be here forever just like none of us are going to be here. Mm-hmm. But we can keep on passing this information to generation to generation, and then people keep on uh, bringing it forth to, to our people as far as health is concerned and necessity. I, I sat in one of his classes just for a minute <laughs> while at his house, and the, the intense amount of information that depth of information that he gave and he just had a bullet point he was just and but each one he's breaking it down mm-hmm. and then giving it to you from a medical standpoint but also giving it to you from a basic standpoint because he mm-hmm. says what he means mean what he says and that's just what it is mm-hmm. and you just have to accept that but you we need that type of tough love sometimes sometimes mm-hmm. we need that tough love he says I, i'm here laughing at what he said because it's tough a lot of people we love sugar we got addicted it's emotional a lot of that stuff is emotional we all have our little vices but it's very important that you take this information, give it to your family. You know, he's written enough books. How many books he's got out there already? Well, yeah, and he got more. Believe me, he ain't finished. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and he got more. See, I don't even have to say nothing, but, but please, family, I, I, I implore all of you out there to do what you have to do to take care of yourself, take care of your family, and learn the basics from this. And go to his website, lailaafrica.com, and take his online classes. Learn, 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 and buy the information and pass it down to your family. Pass it down. That's a, that's, he's a griot, but he's also a writer. So you have to give that information on. Like, we, like the ancestors done to us, <laughs> pass this information down. I, I value Clemson because I've known Clemson for many years, Minister Clemson Brown, from watching him at Slave Theater and different places. So this archive that he has is a great archive that we must pay attention to. And Dr. Africa has his archive the way he presents it and do what he does. We need these people. We need to take the information and move on. But I thank y'all for de- you know, allowing me to get on and talk my stuff. <laughs> Some of our greatest researchers, historians, are people that I had the opportunity to travel with. Dr. Ben, Dr. Van Sertum, or Dr. John Henry Clark, um, Tony Martin, uh, Aza Hilliard, uh, just about all of the uh, names, many uh, those who have done the great work. Um, even Al Sharpton and Reverend Daughtry and you named them. Um, I was the official documentarian for the movement. So every day I was recording. And uh, these people are great in their own right. And they put their lives on the line for African people. I was blessed and I said, bless, because it was, it was just a great journey to have been on that journey with so many of our warriors and record their words, their research, their action. And our people need that. 
in order to understand who they are and where we come from as a people and what we have given to the world. It changes the way we perceive ourselves. And that is important in determining what you do and what you believe you can do. And if you believe you can do a thing, you can do it. But all of this great history that laid down the foundation for all human knowledge comes from our ancestors. But if you don't know that, you are like a man with a billion dollars in the bank, but because you don't know you have it, you don't go to the bank and access it. But we, we have a trillion dollar history. We have trillions and trillions of dollars in our history. So let me cut you for a second. And I want to say something a little bit uh, different. First thing I want to say is you think every, before I say every black man should give you $50, before I say that, that's watching this video, a lot of people don't know how seismic you are because you never really televise and you stayed in the background for so long. So they don't understand that you're a living giant among us. And with your level of humility, you've never come across that way. And the reason why I'm trying to put it in words, so many times we take you for granted, but you're probably one of the last standing giants of our era for the past 100 years. What I'm saying to people is, if you understand the magnitude of work that Minister Brown has done, you will understand why you owe him $50 a piece to complete his work. You see, it, it's gone beyond help us. It's more like, here's the general. If you're a black man and you're a soldier and you understand what the war is, put up your money or shut up forever. That kind of message we have to send at this crucial time. There's the general, he's healthy. Put up or shut up? How, how do you convey that in better words? Um, <clears throat> Rundy, I have so enjoyed life and life has been so good to me. Uh, and just being friends with people who I consider great, I never considered myself. I never saw myself the way you said. Uh, see, I was, uh, you know, putting me on the same level with people, the, the, the greats. I, I don't really see myself that way. I, <laughs> it's true now when I start looking at the work that the Creator blessed me to have in my hands, uh, well, to have accumulated, mm -hmm. uh, I was just really documenting the works of great people. And they were my friends, most of them. But I never considered myself on the same so, level so, with them. So. I looked up to them. <laughs> I saw them as you see me. Yeah, yeah. But I think people should give, and they should give with all of their heart because in my eyes, their work is worth it. Their sacrifice is worth it. I'm talking about great warriors for our people. And I know they were great warriors because I was there feminine. I was there with them. I traveled with them. They, I was on the line with them. If our leadership has said go into the lines of police who at times were surrounding us, uh, I would not have hesitated to go into the line against the police, even though I was not armed. And there were hundreds and hundreds of other brothers who would have done the same thing. I can't say they were not armed, because some of them were, but they were willing to do battle. All who's donated, thank you so much. And all you who really do, thank you. And you've seen how much we've uploaded mm -hmm. and how much you received. Yeah, because this is really critically important. Without our history, we cannot survive. Peace. Thank you.
Am I doing it right? Yeah. Okay. I was just checking with my wife, see whether I should speak. <laughs> <laughs> These things happen when you're married. So, um, I guess I'm going to talk about health this evening. Um, the topic was uh, black folks aren't getting it. Is that right? Yeah, black folks don't get it. I think that was right. Um, the problem uh, that I see, and I'm glad you got a pen and paper. I'm going to run this thing down precisely. Okay? Your culture gives you beliefs. From your beliefs, you get emotions. When you react to an emotion, we call it a feeling. Mm -hmm. Beliefs are reinforced by rituals and ceremonies. Those are only two human behaviors, a ritual and a ceremony. I say hello to you, you say hello to me, that's the greeting ritual. But if I add music to it, dancing, there's the greeting ceremony. So your culture gives you beliefs. From your beliefs, you get emotional. And when you react to your emotions, we call it a feeling. Beliefs come from your culture. The Europeans, and I'm not calling them Greeks, I'm saying precisely that white people, if you want to use that term, have a belief system, and that's called science. The belief is called a theory. A theory is a belief. No scientist walks in a laboratory without his culture. There's no such thing as a culture-less scientist. There's no such thing as a healthy person that's culture-less. Culture defines health. They have, in my business, theories. The theory of evolution, which is not a fact, it's a belief. Theory of gravity, the theory of the speed of light, the, the incremental theory. We got so many beliefs, it's ridiculous. Then I worked in psychology, which I don't do anymore. If I find someone crazy, you're going to stay that way. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. I worked in that business for 15 years based on the belief of Oedipus which is a Greek fairy tale about some guy that got confused and killed his father and had sex with his mother and had some children. That's the basis of how you think. So we think like white people because we're taught to think by them based on a belief. So left hemisphere and right hemisphere of the brain, belief. The subconscious and conscious belief. The id, ego, subconscious, all that, those are beliefs. They are not facts. The brain functions like everything else in nature. A cre tree grows from its root. So every thought you have grows from the root, the brain stem. And from the brain stem, then it's distributed to your middle brain, which is bigger in black women than all women on the planet. The middle brain harmonizes the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. So when we are talking to each other with this concept, we can't get to a black answer using a white program. Mm. There's no way it's going to happen. It's like you're trying to give someone instructions on how to play golf by using the rules of soccer. You're trying to teach someone how to play tennis by using the rules of soccer. You're going to end up playing soccer. You are playing into the destruction of yourself by trying to think like a white person. That's totally ridiculous. The only time I really got upset about it was when I saw a black person buying a white dream book to interpret their dreams. <laughs> you can't get any more crazy than that. <laughs> so I'm saying beliefs will not arrive you to the solution, not a European belief because it's based on their culture. Where do they come from? How do they behave where they come from? Why don't you know cave behavior and the cave social system? <laughs> That's the foundation of their culture. But you don't know that. They are studying in us. The Chinese, Japanese, they're in Egypt right now studying us. But we don't study them. Mm. It's like getting in a boxing match with Muhammad Ali blindfold. It's stupid. But we were trained to be stupid. And stupid doesn't come easy. You gotta practice that one. Every skill is practice. If you wanna be good at golf, you gotta practice. 
You want to be good at math, you got to practice. And if you want to be good at being stupid, you got to practice. <laughs> And some people always say, well, why did he lie to me like that? I said, he didn't lie to you like that. He was just practicing. Don't get all upset when a Negro lies to you. They just practice telling another lie. <laughs> Every skill, no matter how dumb it may seem to you, is practice. They have learned us to be stupid about ourselves and about each other. How can you love yourself with a white program? Mm -hmm. How can you understand your mind using a white program? The mind doesn't function on the subconscious. There's no subway system in the brain. There's no subconscious. There's no alter consciousness. You can't expand your consciousness. You're not God. God gave you consciousness. You can use it better. God gave you smart. You can use it better. But a book, I write eight of them. A book can't make you smart. No. It can help you exercise your smartness, but it can't make you smart. A book is not God. So we have to go back and redefine all of this stuff again because we've been following a belief system and beliefs are based on culture. Look, we don't get it because there's something wrong with that person over there. Because we all think that we got it together and that Negro is the one messing up the whole race. No, you just as crazy as Michael Jackson in your ooh ooh own way. <laughs> we all got it in us. We all got it in this. So we have to go back and redefine everything. Get it out of the beliefs of the Europeans and put it in our beliefs of ma'at. Truth, justice, reciprocity. We got to define it from our culture and define our brain from our culture and our health from our culture. You cannot be healthy and cultureless. Culture defines everything for you. A Chinese you say, okay, they're just Chinese. No, they want to see China in every damn thing. That's Chinese clothing, because they want to see China in their clothing. That's Chinese music. They want to see China in their music. That's Chinese food. They want to see China on a plate. Now, Negro is a different thing. They want Italian food, Chinese food. They cannot define themselves by the food they eat. All the other races do that. Spanish food, Italian food, Chinese food, Negro food. <laughs> Negro food, you know what I'm talking about. You call it soul food. But you're missing the whole thing. Our ancestors ate over 30 herbs with their soul food. Over 30 different wild herbs they ate with the big foot, with bunions and corns. You're not eating the wild herbs that they were eating. You don't eat poke salad, you don't eat dandelion salad. They made a ham, you know? They put honey on the ham because the worms want to eat the honey. The worms come up to the surface, eat the honey, and they put cloves in it, and cloves kill the worms. That's where you get this honey baked ham from. Put the honey on it, the worms want the honey, come to the surface, you put cloves in that, in that ham, cloves kill the worms. You're not doing that. You eat naked, naked pig feet. <laughs> You need to put some clothes in that stuff. <laughs> put some clothes in that oxtail that's been up an ox ass all day. <laughs> Soul food, you make a break. <laughs> but the, the thing is that I'm trying to say, if you can't connect it to culture, you don't know what you're talking about. You got to connect this stuff to culture. Ring around the roses, pocket full of posies. Hatch, hatch you, we all fall down. Get poor circulation, get rosy cheeks, and your veins burst in a circle around your cheeks. Then you go into a cough spasm, and you fall down. But if you didn't know that, you'd say, oh, it's just a children's story. No, it's defining death. To teach your children death is ridiculous, because you're not connected to culture. Be five, four, fum. I smell the blood of the Englishman. Oh, yeah. Jack went up the beanstalk, which is symbolic of the penis. And Jack is symbolic of the sperm, and touched that egg. But you, you, do you know this story? He took the egg and he stole it and ran. And the giant put a curse on him and called the devil, Fi, Fa, Fo Fum. It's an incantation, calling the devil to destroy Jack. 
But if you don't connect that story to culture, it's just a story. See, the whole thing is to get you... Oh, Lord, did I say something? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus on the main line. <laughs> he didn't pay his cell phone bill. Another song. So what I'm trying to say is we have to go back and connect things to culture in order to understand it clearly. That's all I'm trying to say. If you can't connect it to culture, forget about it. I wrote the history of slave, of cave culture in, in this book. Uh, hand me a book, please, uh, Jamon. Uh, uh, Nutricide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Nutritional Instruction of the Black Race. Thank you very much. This one has what they did in the caves. Where they get this mentality, you think that white people think like this. This tells you where it comes from. You have to know their history to know your history. If I want to understand how the Haitian black people behave, I study French. I study the French people. I want to understand how the black people in Brazil behave, I study the Portuguese. I want to understand how the black people in New York behave, I study the Jews. This is one of the biggest slave ports of the Jews. This in Savannah, which had the largest slave auction in history. The Jewish slave guy, who, Santiago, who built the first synagogue in America, was from here. Sold slaves. It's in Providence, Rhode Island, by the way. You just want to see a monument to your destruction. Thank you very much. But nonetheless, I'm not here to beat on anybody. I know we all have struggles, you know what I mean. I know some of us are still addicted to masturbating. I understand these things. A lot of us are very handy. <laughs> we all have challenges, you know that. So I'm not here to beat down anybody. I'm here to give you a better understanding so you can beat the, uh, so you, you can survive the black experience. <laughs> yeah. Please. So we don't have a subconscious. We don't have uh, id and ego and all these other Greek fantasies based on some childhood Greek fairy tale. That's not psychology. That's Europeans practicing their culture. That's Europeans practicing their culture on you through math. Because there are only two things you can do in math. Add and subtract. No matter how difficult it is, you can only do two things. Add and subtract. So they just reflect their culture in mathematics and biology and chemistry. The stuff that scares you. That's just them talking about how white they are. <laughs> See, when you have a cave, you don't want to invite your friends in. <laughs> Say, this is my cave. I don't care who you are, get out. Because Europeans don't play fractions, as Dr. Henry Clark would say. They, don't, they want the whole damn thing. They don't want part of America. They want the whole country. They don't want part of Afghanistan. They want the whole thing. They do not play factions. That comes from their cave mentality. You see? So when they come at you, you say, well, I got it. I got it. They've only been out the case about 30,000 years. How smart can they be? <laughs> How smart can they be? If you were raised by a white woman, Obama, how smart can you be? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't mean to go there. <laughs> they are not that smart. You put them on a pedestal that they don't belong. We are two million year old civilization. We're the ancient people. You're looking at somebody in kindergarten. I feel sorry for them. Ones that are in the cemetery, that is. So, nonetheless, <laughs> it's an old African story. So you, you black and you scrape your skin, you see that pink under there? So, when the uh, white people came and the missionaries turned around and said, why, why, do, why, do, why do black Africans are crying about these white people? Why are they crying? They, we're crying because we don't know what they did that God didn't give them any skin. <laughs> you see? It's a whole other mentality when you're looking at things through your culture rather than through theirs. Mm -hmm. A whole different mentality. So, I'm saying that they are not going to share anything with you. It is no way that an eagle is going to take advice from a turtle. Mm -hmm. There's no way. It is no way that the Europeans are going to listen to you give them advice. Eagles listen to eagles. Snakes listen to snakes. Bats listen to bats. 
And you talking around trying to explain something to white people? Are you crazy? Only people can change white people is white people. That's all I'm trying to say. Only people can change white people is white people. Mm -hmm. The only people, the only bird can change an eagle is another eagle. This is the laws of nature. I'm not making this stuff up. It's very sad. Now I'm gonna define something by culture. You go to a funeral and you see this coffin come out, and it's people carrying the coffin, and they dump the clown, I mean dump the person <laughs> in the grave. And we know the healthy way to, to, to do this is to use 95% water and 5% potassium and heat it up and boil it, kind of, and then the flesh will dissolve. And it won't contaminate the earth or anything. Doesn't cost $6,000 or nothing. <laughs> Just potassium and water. Heat it up and the flesh will dissolve. You don't contaminate the earth or nothing. That's the way to do it. If you're going to bury somebody, bury them four feet under the ground, and that way they can rot and give that nutrients back to the earth. But we're going into this whole thing from their culture with this funeral ceremony, you know, and the coffin, and the, these guys that carry the coffin, I forgot what they call it. Oh, oh, yeah, Paul. <laughs> we need to bury Paul. <laughs> Paul buried. But in our culture, it was symbolic. You were in your sarcophagus, which we can call a coffin, and the people carrying the coffin, they had one person symbolizing Ma'at, they had a hawk head. You see, then this funeral was for the children to understand that you have achieved things in your life. You achieved balance, harmony, reciprocity, and that's why they carry in the coffin. But since you're not looking at it through African eyes, you know, they're pallbearers. No, that's the symbol of what this person achieved in their life. You see? Balance, reciprocity, and different animal shapes and different colors for these symbols of words I'm using. Balance and harmony and reciprocity. Are you still with me? Because mm -hmm. the whole purpose of the funeral was for the children. To educate them. That's what it was for. And the children can relate to these colors and the hawk head and all these different animals that they're carrying the coffin. But you look at it through white eyes and you're missing the whole thing. They stole that from you. Mm. Just remember one scientific thing. If they got something, they stole it. <laughs> Ice cream invented by you in America. The car industry, the Ford stole from Greenfield, Ohio, invented by a black man. Mm -hmm. Everything they got, they stole. That's why you in America. You look stolen property. <laughs> I don't want to upset none of these runaway slaves. <laughs> Just trying to say, we got to go back and say, Copa, attach culture to things so we can see it clearly, so we can understand our problem. Because then our problem is that we have been chauvinized. Science is controlled by men. Chemistry is controlled by men. History is controlled by men. Tutankhamen, Napoleon. You know I'm telling you, George Washington. History is controlled by men. Science is controlled by men. You, you follow me here? Mm -hmm. Fashion is controlled by men. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Tap? They, de they design the hairstyle of these women. Yeah, the clothes. You know what I'm saying? The tampons. Now, that's ridiculous. The shoes. They, men control everything, so you've been chauvinized. That's the problem. We've been chauvinized because that's how the Europeans roll. A chauvinistic way of looking at a lady who's pregnant and saying she's pregnant. <laughs> that doesn't happen in our culture. The man is pregnant with the mother and the child is unborn. Are you still following me? The mother is pregnant with the child is unborn and the father. And the child is pregnant with the mother and father. Mm. Everybody's pregnant. <laughs> Are you with me here? Mm. And the child is doing these things emotionally that makes the woman eat certain things or want to get out and walk because the child is explaining my personality to my mother and father before I'm born. Mm. That's why she, a, a, a Scorpio child is going to behave different from a Pisces child in the womb. You still follow me here? Because the child is taking them through emotional rites of passage so they'll know the child before it's born. But we, we had shop and I said, oh, she's pregnant. No. We are pregnant. See what I'm trying to get to? Mm -hmm. Oh, she had abortion. No, we had abortion. 
Is this still with me? Well, that lady was raped. No, we were raped. Is still with me here? Because I'm looking at it through African eyes. But when you're looking at it through their eyes, you're lost in the stars, which was a play the black man wrote <laughs> here in New York called Lost in the Stars. And I think Louis Armstrong sang the song, Why Am I Born So Black and Blue? Very famous song. But nonetheless, we got to look at it properly. Now, I'm looking at a slave auction through black eyes. I'm auctioning off these slaves, but I want this slave to be sold as a waiter, as you would call it, <laughs> working the house, waiting on the tables and everything. So I set up a stage with a table, everything, and the slave comes out and demonstrates his skills. You still with me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is what was going on in Savannah. This is what the white people call play. This is where theater comes from, from slavery. And then the lady walks down the ramp and they bid on her. Look at those hips. Give three, give me five, 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 give me ten, 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 give me. They bidding on her, what you call a, a ramp in the with a uh, pageant. What's that Run thing? Beauty pageant. Yeah. So when they get one cute white woman, it's a big damn deal. Because all of them look like an unfinished mayonnaise sandwich to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not in person. I have issues. I really do. <laughs> But well, we got to go back and look at this history correctly, and we got to look at chemistry correctly, biology correctly, because we're using somebody else's vision, and they're just explaining their culture through science. Because that's what I'm reading science. I live in it. I read, I read chemistry every day, biology every day. I'm telling you, all they're doing is saying I'm white. That's all they're doing. They're using all these different symbols to say it. But I had never learned anything from somebody white except a miseducation. And Carter G. Woodson said that. Mm -hmm. Any education you get from a white person, no matter what the subject, is a miseducation. And Dr. Amos Wilson used to talk about it. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. Yes. 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 Yeah, he used to talk about it. He said economics has nothing to do with mathematics. Economics has something to do with desire. Desire is emotions. You create a desire for your Nikes, and then you come to buy the Nikes from me to satisfy your desires. Then I say these Nikes are valuable. Value and desire are emotions. Economics has nothing to do with money. It's the ability to control desire and value. You see? It has nothing to do with You say, oh, I say, this is valuable. This is gold. And then you go out and buy a whole truckload of worth a million dollars. And since I own value, I say, now gold's worth a penny. Now you broke. Because <laughs> I own value and desire. It has nothing to do with money. The first money in history of people. That's how we did it. People. So you help me build this house, I'll let you use my son here for 10 years. You see, I'm paying him with my son. That's how we did it. That's, that's why people want money. Don't you get it? It's, it's not gold or diamond, it's people. Money is people, the ability to control people. That's why they want to be a millionaire. Contro be a millionaire means I can control 100,000 people. That's all it's about. You say, are they sure crazy about money? No, they're crazy about control. That's what the money represents to them. And they practice this thought process. You see, you can call it football if you like. I had 50 yards, you had 50 yards, and I'm trying to steal your 50 yards. That's what it's about. That's why they like it. And I'm using deceit and deception, which is military thinking. Military thinking has nothing to do with guns. His ability to practice deceit and deception. Mm. I'm going to deceive you and make pretend that the play is going this way. It's actually going that way. Mm. Deceit and deception. So I steal your 58 yards, as you call it. And when I finish, I win the woman because her legs are open. Well, you call it a goalpost. Mm. And I put my sperm between her legs. You call it a football. Dr. Francis Tress Wilson gets into this much better than me. I'm just trying to say they are reinforcing that concept of taking things. That's why they like it. Take it no matter what you have to use. Lie, steal, beg, borrow, but take it. That's what they do. But you think it has something to do with football. They ain't there for football. They have to reinforce their culture because everything relates to culture. Football is just another cultural game to keep them white. I'm telling you, it's very simple to be healthy. 
Don't be deceived by these military people. If God didn't make it, don't put it in your mouth. Very simple. God didn't make white rice. God didn't make white sugar. No. White sugar from sugar cane, you have to take it out. You take one substance out of a plant and you have created a drug. It's the isolation of one substance. If I take the cocaine out of the cocoa leaf, I have a drug because I isolated the substance. Are you still with me here? Am I going to? I take the starch out of a wheat berry, just the starch. I have a drug. You can call it flour if you like. But I took out the starch and trashed everything else. I isolated one substance. And that's what makes a drug. I isolate the heroin from a poppy seed. I got a drug. And all drugs work the same way against melanin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't work against melanin, it's not a drug at all. Marijuana. Marijuana is a plant, but once you cook it, it's a drug because you isolated the oil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. once, once you cook it, you've isolated the oil, therefore it's a drug. And I've never heard anyone that smokes weed say, you got any organic weed? <laughs> I've never heard that in my life. Mm -hmm. And I passed by a little weed in my lifetime. Wait, one time. <laughs> That's another story. I was lost in the stars. So, all I'm trying to say is, if you isolate a substance, that's what makes it a drug. If you take the sugar cane, take the sugar out of it, you've isolated the sugar. And left with the wheat and the, the protein and the vitamin B and vitamin you left all of that and just took out the sugar. Now you eat the sugar and the body says, I don't know the sugar, but I know sugar cane. So it tries to make the sugar back in the sugar cane grass, pull the moisture out of your, your nervous system. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Now you're hyperactive, pull the moisture out of your skin, now you have to use more lotion, pull the moisture out of your scalp, now you're going bald at 25. You, you still with me here? This is what the sugar's doing, because it's trying to make, be holy again. So it robs the bones of moisture, the muscles, the nerves, the scalp, the hair, the prostate, your uterus. It's Robin Peter and Robin Paul, nobody gets paid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's taking the moisture out of your tissue, out of your blood, which is tissue, out of your bones, which is tissue. It's trying to make the sugar cane sugar out of the grass again. Let me go another way. You eat a raisin, the body says, I don't want a raisin, I only know grapes. <laughs> you eat the raisin, the body says, I'm going to put the water back in the raisin, turn it back into a grape, then I'm going to eat it. So it's taking the moisture from your skin, your muscles, your bones, robbing you. That's the danger of it. It's a, I, it I concentrated it and isolated it. When I took the moisture out of it, now I got this little grape that's all the way down to a raisin. That's what happens when you eat these substances uh, that these the Europeans, uh, I mean, uh, I'm trying to, you know, be uh, PC, culturally, uh, a politically correct. Yeah, I'm trying to be politically correct. Because I learned this. My grandmother told me. She told me, you college and all. That's what she called me. So you college now. Say something smart. I said, okay, Grandma. Encyclopedia. She said, I know you are smart. <laughs> that, was, that was her thing. My grandmother came out of slavery kind of thing. My grandmother's mother was a slave. So she comes out of that slavery mentality. Nothing wrong with that. Because I was going to the white school. You know how it is when you're trying to, you know, be successful, which meant being white. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to school. I'm studying psychology. And my grandmother asked, what you studying, child? You cheering, always studying something. I said, okay, I'm studying psychology. Well, yes, yeah, psychology. But what's that? <laughs> I said, Grandma, I'm studying how to help women who have been raped. She said, you got to study that? You just wipe yourself off and keep walking. <laughs> That's how she was raised. That's what was going on. You just wipe yourself off and keep walking. That's what she said. I said, Grandma, there's a little bit more to it than that. She said, child. <laughs> See, I wasn't into her reality. With, I'm thinking all of this. You know, she know, That's what goes on in your black woman. You're raped by it. You know what I'm saying. I said, okay. But I thought she was just being, you know, old. 
I'm doing something wrong. She said, go get me the switch. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, that's really a stick, Grandma. You know that, don't you? <laughs> she said, I'm trying to switch your bad behavior to good behavior. Get me the switch. That's what she was saying. I'm trying to switch this behavior to good behavior. Get me the switch. But I'm in my, you know, European education. I said, Grandma. <laughs> And you know, I just took it to old people saying that. You know how us old people, especially you know, Dr. J. <laughs> you know how old people talk. <laughs> so nonetheless, we got to go back and put culture to everything in order to understand this thing. And everybody wants to see culture. Chinese want to see Chinese food. They want to see Chinese clothes. They want to hear Chinese music. They want to see their culture. So you want to see your culture. You gotta stay in Cobra and say, wait a minute, this is not African culture. That my brain resembles a Greek fairy tale called Oedipus. <laughs> no, it does not. It doesn't, how can you, but we study this stuff, we think, oh, yeah, white people, they know, they know, they know, too. really? So I wrote about that cave history, what they did socially, how they had sex, how they had married, how they had sex with animals, which they still do. Mm -hmm. I'm just telling you, this is normal for them. When I was, I, unfortunately, I was in the military, you know, I was trying to help us be uh, free. Is that the word? Um, I was in the military. Let's just take it that way. And I was a psychotherapist for about five years. Then I was a nurse and all that kind of stuff. So I'm working in the air, and I'm going to school during the, in the evening, a German school, and all that stuff. And they're telling these jokes, you know. They, sometimes white people forget you were black, you know, and they, they be saying things around you. I said, what the hell, you know? <laughs> you know? So they, he, he's saying, oh, I'm gonna tell y'all a joke. My professor, he was from uh, Russia. Nice guy, you know. Uh, so he was up and said, yeah, you know these white missionaries, they went to Africa. I said, this is gonna be a good story, you know? <laughs> yeah, they went to Africa, and the, and the guy told them, don't worry about those Africans in there. They're they not gonna bother you. They only eat beans. He said, oh, okay. So the white people wake up in a pot and they're being cooked. And they looked at the damn, you know, guy and said, you told me they only eat beans. He said, yeah, human beans. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you gotta look at where these people are coming from with these stories. You know? Everybody else I said, damn. I said, you know, I can't even do that without potato salad. You know? <laughs> It's just a whole thing. It's just a whole thing. So we're going back and we're attaching culture to things so we can get it. Because we're not getting it. We're just not getting it. Because we're using a white program to understand something black for us. you got to say, wait a minute, this is a white program. That's good for white people. Because they don't see the world the way you see it. I can see my hand out of the corner of my eye. They call it the, your field of vision. Peripheral field of vision. Asians are here. White people are here. Mm -hmm. So if you walk over here, white people won't see you. And you say, damn, they walk right by me and act like they didn't see you. They didn't see you. <laughs> you might, they don't have a big field of vision like you have. That's what I'm trying to say. All of us can identify when you say, they didn't see me. That's right, they didn't see you. That hair sure smell like dog when it's wet. No. Oh. The chemical name is ammonia and sulfur. Mm -hmm. White people have more ammonia in their body and sulfur in their body than you do. Mm -hmm. You only smell it when the hair gets wet. Right. Mm -hmm. Ammonia is a trick tricky chemical. If you heat it up very hot, it will freeze. Mm -hmm. Then you see white people out in the winter. Why do you wear them short pants? It's cold out here. They got ammonia. Right. <laughs> you make them cold, they get warm. It's the chemistry. You've been smelling the hair and say, oh, damn, it smells like a dog. That's sulfur. Mm -hmm. They have sulfur in the center of their melanin. You have selenium in the center of yours. It's physiologically impossible for a white person to come from a black person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This melanin has sulfur in the center. Your melanin has selenium in the center. Mm -hmm. A white person cannot come from a black person. Those are physical facts. That's why this man wrote the theory of evolution. He wasn't crazy like you are. Of course, we know the Jews control science anyway. Darwin's a Jew, Einstein's a Jew. They control everything. 
you can't get out of school unless you bow to Darwin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your paper guy say in evolution in some way, you ain't getting out of school. I'm just telling you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where they get the phrase, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Because <laughs> they thought you came from a monkey. You follow me? Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. I'm saying, yeah, you are. You're white. <laughs> I'm saying we know this kind of thing, so it's just a matter of using the vocabulary to trigger this knowledge, but you already have it. You know it's something wrong with people. They come, wherever they go, it's a trail of blood. You know that. They come here, they exterminate the American Indians. You know I'm telling you the truth. You gotta know that there's something wrong with those people. You say white supremacy, but white supremacy is a belief. The thing is white domination. White domination is supported by the belief of white supremacy, which is defended by white racism. Mm. I'm telling you how it's socially constructed. First, they want to dominate. And to dominate, you have to have a belief. White supremacy see, supports the, the domination of you. You follow me? White domination, white supremacy, white racism. White racism supports white supremacy. And white supremacy supports domination. They want to dominate. They don't want part of Africa, they want the whole damn thing. That's why the French are over there, the Chinese are over there, the Europe. You know I'm telling you the truth. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they want to dominate. You up there talking about, oh, it's white supremacy. No, it ain't. You chasing the tail. <laughs> you need to chase the whole damn thing, but you have to, let's get rid of white supremacy. No, you can't. You got to get rid of white culture to do that. And you can't change white culture. Only white people can change it. Only an eagle can change the behavior of another eagle. You, you, you still with me here? Mm -hmm. You got to come out of that thing so you can get it. Come out of that fantasy. So when I talk about the Europeans, I don't talk about it from a black perspective. I go back to Greek literature who talks about it. So they're shameless, they're thieves. The Greeks said that, and I use the Greek references. The one that said it in modern history was Frederick Douglass when he gave a speech on the 4th of July, I don't know if you, yeah, he, said, he said it quite clearly. But I don't want to upset now you cheering, because y'all got to go, you know, and do your white jobs and all that stuff. <laughs> no, really, you know, you have to do that sort of thing. But there's no way that you can be sane and oppressed. You cannot be sane and oppressed. A sane person would not put up with this stuff. Mm -hmm. You gotta be crazy. As Amos Wilson would say, you gotta be out of your mind. <laughs> and into their mind. Mm. To support this stuff that they're doing. We have the highest epidemic of eight year old girls getting pregnant. Black people. Mm -hmm. Eight years old. We know from agriculture, from the famous scientist, uh, George Washington Carver, some of y'all may know him. <laughs> he said, a plant that's sickly reproduces quickly. A race that's sickly reproduces quickly. That's what's going on. You show the signs of a race that's sickly. Because you absolutely believe that you can logically explain an emotional illness to a mentally ill person. You can be mentally ill and you can be emotionally ill, which you may call post-traumatic slavery trauma, long word for emotional injury. That's the emotional injury. You can have emotional damaged person. You can have emotional stunted growth. Those are emotional illnesses. You can't find emotional illnesses in a psychology book. You find some post-traumatic slavery trauma. That's an emotional illness. And it's hereditary. It's passed down from one person to the next. But nonetheless, I don't, I don't want you to think that you can't be cured of what's wrong with you. There's a lot of cures for a Negro, aside from suicide and death. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know you can't go back in your mother's womb and reorganize yourself correctly. You know you weren't born under African symbolism or principle. You know your mother and father didn't say a prayer to God before they conceived you. Mm -hmm. 
that's how it's done. You can say a prayer for a hamburger, damn it. You can say a prayer for a child that's going to conceive. And sex was a spiritual activity in our culture. God created sex. But you kick sex out of the bedroom, what are you doing? God created sex. So sex is a spiritual activity. But you only see that when you're eating a hamburger or something. You got to put that back into your vocabulary. You got to see this through your African eyes for this thing to get straight. And a lot of y'all try, you know, when you're doing say, oh, Jesus, this stuff good. You know? I mean, you're trying, you know. <laughs> but I'm talking about a like formal activity. Because the marriage ceremony is not for the preacher, it's for the couple. So every, every year, every six months, you can change your ceremony because that's just your objective as a couple for that year. Are you still with me? That's what the ceremony is for. It's for you. It's not for the preacher. So you change that objective. Say, this, this we're, we're going we're gonna to focus on my this, you know. And you change it. Because the ceremony is for you, not for them. It's your program, whatever you're working on for that year or that six months. But we're following the Europeans. I mean, the Coca uh, the, we're following... Uh, <laughs> Uh, not cracking so I'm trying to be politically correct. <laughs> Y'all trying to get me back into my Getanese vocabulary. <laughs> you know I'm a Getanese. <laughs> so, so we, yeah, colonizing. I, I go for that. But we, we're just trying to get it together here. So all I'm saying is that you can't change all of this stuff in you. So all you can do is create the condition where your children can change it. You're trying to create the condition. So don't try to get all of this, you with somebody and all of a sudden you're a vegetarian, all of a sudden you deep breathing, you know, all of a sudden you don't pick your nose. You're trying to be all cropper and everything. You're trying to squeeze out a fart when you used to blast about it. <laughs> and you know, squeeze it about now, all proper and everything. Funky Negro. <laughs> Well, we can't change all of this stuff in ourselves or in our mates, but we can set the condition for this change to occur. Now, as I mentioned, you want to eat things in their original godly state. You want whole wheat, you want whole corn, you want to eat it in this state to keep you in your whole state. Because mm -hmm. the birthing process, as Dr. Wilson would say, the, the, how you were born shapes your intelligence for the rest of your life. And how your mother carried the pregnancy straightens. This has an effect on you. We call it epigenetics in the white language. This has an effect on you. Because you see everything whole. The amniotic fluid, uh, I'm trying to get people who not into this thing. I'm, I'm not trying to talk dumb to anybody. I'm just trying to say, just visualize an egg. And the yolk of the egg is you. And that white of the egg is what we call amniotic fluid. And the shell of the egg is the placenta. Is everyone with me? Yes, the placenta grows from the baby. The placenta is not part of the mother. Let's get it all straight here. This amniotic fluid, which is called Aman, if you're into our culture, the fluid of Aman, holy waters, amniotic fluid. The baby is in this fluid, and in this fluid is what we call electrolytes. And electrolytes give off sparks like lightning. So when that baby sees these yellow bright sparks, it knows it's associated with anger. The baby knows when the mother's angry is what I'm telling you. Because it changes the pH of the amniotic fluid. I don't want to get too science stuff in here. Is everybody kind of where I'm at? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the baby can see anger and the baby drinks the fluid so the baby can taste anger. The baby can touch the fluid so the baby can touch anger. And electricity makes sounds, so the baby can hear anger. To the baby, anger is holistic. We call this fixed behavior. So whenever I want to bond you to anything, I go back to your original program. I have New York with a flower. I have New York with a fruit. I have New York with an anthem. I have New York with a flag. That's how I bond you to New York. Does everyone follow what I'm saying? I'm going back to your original fixed behavior to bond you to New York. That's why schools have flags, schools have colors, basketball teams have flags, because they're using your original behavior, your original program to bind you to it. <clears throat> it's no accident. 
It is no accident. So I'm going back to that and saying we missed all of that because the baby is holy. So everything the baby sees, touch, smell is holy. And the baby can't talk Swahili, English, or Spanish. So the baby talks emotions. That's why women are more emotional than men. They have a larger talk center than men. They talk to their self more and talk to other women more and talk to you more. <laughs> you say, what's wrong with her? I'm saying she's locked into the program of her brain. She can't escape her brain. So what is happening is, since we don't know that, we get all confused because we're trying to look at our brain as if it's a white brain. It ain't happening there. Everything has to be holistic. That's what our ancestors did. That's why they had colors on these people. Hawks on it, all that. They, they used the whole program to bond you to the ma'at. Truth, justice, reciprocity. Are you still with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's our Africanness in us. But there's nothing wrong with being a, a Negro uh, with a warranty, of course. Because uh, when your warranty is, it runs out, they get rid of you. Ask Bill Cosby. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Facts. Facts. He was all right for a while there. He was one of their favorite Negroes. You know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he was under warranty. His warranty ran out. That's all. Negroes come with warranties. Yeah. It's going to happen to Steve Harvey, too. Uh, warranty going to run out. I try to tell these people that. I try to tell OG that. I said, OG, your warranty going to run out. <laughs> You know how it is. I didn't mean to go there. All I'm just saying, you can change things in yourself, but do not expect your friends to change in the same level that you change. That's called an incremental theory. Incremental theory is that you're going to grow Everything, part of your body is going to grow at the same speed at the same time. But sometimes your finger grows faster than the other finger. The incremental is a theory. Are you still with me? So a baby wakes up to a new body every morning. The hand grew and the other hand didn't grow. So they go to eat and they miss the whole damn mouth and they say, ah! <laughs> You say, why are you hollering like that? The food tastes good. The baby said, because I grew with a bigger finger overnight. Because like, ah! <laughs> they don't grow in increments. That's a theory of the Europeans. So we tortured our children because their foot grew, one foot grew bigger than another. They walk in and you see nothing in front of them, they fall down. You say, damn, why the kid fall down? <laughs> you just so perplexed at the whole thing. You say, because this foot grew bigger than the other foot and I had to, I couldn't manipulate, so I fell down. So they're sitting at the table screaming and hollering. You say, what's wrong with you? The food's good. What's wrong? Because ah! you don't understand that program. Because you didn't go through your rites of passage, which is a German term, has nothing to do with African culture. It wasn't a rite of passage, it was a school. You went to school to be an adult. You know that. You went to school to be a carpenter. You know that. You went to school to get married. You know that. That was just natural for our ancestors. They said, no, you want to be an adult, go to school. Europeans call it rites of passage. You still with me? Because there's no such thing as a teenager in African culture. That was invented by white people. There's no such thing. We didn't have 13, 14, we had 10 and 1, 10 and 2, 10 and 3, 21, 22. We didn't have no 13, 14. Where'd that come from? White people. Because <laughs> they want to extend childhood, you know, make you more dependent. It's a whole other subject about them. It goes into that whole titty thing. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know I'm telling you the truth. Because in food science, we have to duplicate the titty. We give it, call it a mouth feel. Yeah, we want the skin to be kind of hard and what comes out soft. You call it Krispy Kreme donuts. You follow me? We want that cream to come out of that titty. Sometimes we put whipped cream and then we put a nipple on top. You know I'm telling you the mm -hmm. truth. <laughs> You're going around looking for titties everywhere. <laughs> you know I'm telling you the truth. The first thing a baby sees is that big circle around a woman's nipple when they're breastfeeding. So that when children like circles. Mm -hmm. Look at Mickey Mouse the rat. Big circle ears. You never seen a rat with no circle ears. <laughs> they trying to peel the children, so they put a circle on that. Look at children's cartoons. Circles everywhere. Big eyes, circles, because they like circles. So we go back to the original program. So we have horses running in circles, cars in circles. Are you following me there? 
We just know how to bond you to things because we know the program. You don't know it because you're studying their fantasy instead of the reality of it all. That's it. You did good, Doctor. What? You did good. <laughs> uh, that's Let's it. Let's give it up for Doctor. Yeah, <laughs> telling the truth okay <laughs> I want to see if they're telling the truth we're gonna talk about digestion okay so we're gonna go literal okay just hang in there with me I know that sounds a little crazy but hang in there with me from 12 to 8 is the time that you should actually eat your foods 12 noon to 8 how many people eat after 8 o'clock raise a height with family up in here okay so after 8 o'clock your body's actually supposed to assimilate, which is break down, okay? And between 4 and 12 p.m., 12, excuse me, 12 noon, your body's actually getting rid of the waste. So who gets up in the morning and eats that breakfast? Who does that? Who gets up and eats before 12 o'clock? Tell the truth now, I'm looking. I'm in all your business. I see you over there, and I see you over there, and I see you over here. Now remember, you're supposed to be eating between what? Okay, and then what happens between eight? What is it? That's right, so eight to four in the morning, what's happening? Digestion. The body's actually trying to digest the food. And then what happens between four and 12? Elimination. Elimination. So what do you think happens when you start eating at say, seven o'clock in the morning? Eight o'clock in the morning. What happens? <laughs> digestion starts really. Okay, so the digestion, the, well, you're getting rid, right? You're supposed to be getting rid of your waste. So can the body get rid of waste and while you're eating? No. No. So I'm telling you, we're going to see if we pull the shit tonight. <laughs> okay? We're just going to find out. So say you ate after 8 o'clock. Okay? And say you do this a lot. How many people eat after 8 o'clock a lot? Uh-oh, my shit meter is going off. Because <laughs> you understand, you're breaking some rules. Now we know what time we're supposed to eat. We know what time the body breaks down. We know that, right? And we know what time we're supposed to eliminate. Let's try it again, because you know I like to do this. Make sure everybody knows what I'm talking about. What time are you supposed to eat? What time does the body process the foods? This is a black African family. It's right, you guys are right. And what time do you get rid of your waste? Four to 12. So I want you to remember when you start putting something in your mouth, whether you violate. Now let's talk about what you ate. I'm just gonna deal with the meat eaters for now, vegetarians, hold on. Meat eaters in the house, can you raise your hand? Come on, now don't be shy. Put your hand up for that chicken. Come on, represent. Okay, so now when you're eating meat, do you properly combine, combine your foods? Do you eat meat with vegetables all the time? All the time. Y'all getting awful quiet for meat eaters. Okay, but I tell you what. If you eat meat with vegetables, it starts at four hours to digest it. It starts for four hours to digest it. You got it? And where my meat eaters at? I feel like I ain't talking to nobody. Yeah, don't be, don't, don't hide. Come on, I want to see you. Okay, so if you eat meat with carbohydrates, what's carbohydrates? Rice, rice, rice and peas, starch, potato. What else? Caribbean food. Brown provision. Yum. I know I'm, I know I'm speaking to somebody's heart right now. If you eat meat with a carbohydrate, you have just now gone to two to three days to digest that meat. So I'm trying to see if you're full of shit or not. I'm just, you can tell yourself. 
I ain't saying it. Okay? And we've all been full of shit at some point of our life, right? That's right. Okay? So, you ate meat, then you ate the carbohydrates, and guess what else you violated? You drank at the same time. Mm -hmm. How many people eat and drink at the same time? Okay? So, you know what meter is going up? What meter is this? Okay, you don't have to say it, but we know it. Yeah, you're right, though. She said it. I didn't say it. Okay? Now I want to talk to the vegetarians. So you ate your vegetables, and vegetarians seem to get self-righteous sometimes. Anybody ever met some self-righteous vegetarians and vegans? Well, I'm a vegetarian. I'm vegan. And I'm like, okay, but you eat carbs all day long. Potato-tarian. Yeah, potato-tarian. You know we can make some words up. I'll take that one. Okay? So we got some potato-tarians in the house. Starch-tarians. That too. Now that's getting a little bit of college with it. So you're eating a lot of starches. Okay? Starches turn to what? Sure. Have you ever seen a fat vegetarian? Yes. yes. Now how in the hell did that happen? <laughs> it happened from sugar, right? Yes. Now we're talking about digestion. So now we're talking about most vegetarians are saying, well, I can eat rice and beans. Right? Mm -hmm. But it's wrongly combined. Mm -hmm. It's wrong. Why is it wrongly combined? Use your African minds. It's too starchy. Yeah. Now you are supposed to have 15% protein, 15% raw fat, and 70% what? Vegetables. Vegetables. Okay? So if you had a plate full of rice <laughs> and a plate full of peas, because you know that when they give it to you, they usually give you a little bit of meat, but it's a whole bunch of rice. I'm like, well, damn, let me eat that. Okay? So you're eating a lot of starch. Where is your protein? Where's it at? What's the building block of a cell? Protein. So you wonder why you're not healing. You ever been in a situation where you maybe sprained an ankle or hurt some part of your body and it's just taking you a while to heal? Because you don't have the elements that's essential inside the body for the body to actually heal itself. But I want to go back and see if you pull the shit, though. I think that's a more appropriate conversation for right now. So, if you're eating vegetarians, what time do you eat? Who are my vegetarians? Come on, get self-righteous with some vegetarian. Okay, what time you eat? You eat early? Okay, so if a vegetarian starts to eat at what time would be a violation? Any time before what? Any time before 12. So say you eat at 10. Okay? What are you supposed to be doing between 4 and 12? Eliminating. Eliminating. Now, I want to start talking about, now we're going to get, this is a family reunion. You don't have to feel embarrassed. If you see somebody with a camera up, just don't put your face in it. I want to know how many bowel movements we kicking out in a day. Okay? Are we at least having, and you know what, you only have to raise your hand, just like blink your eye. Blink your eye. Are you at least having one bowel movement a day? Come on, just blink your eye if it's just yes. one bowel movement a day. Okay? One bowel movement. Got one? Okay. Now let's see if we can get two bowel movements a day. How many people do two bowel movements? Just blink your eye twice. Okay, let me, I'm looking. Okay, blink, blink. Oh, oh, I'll get some damn stairs like. Okay, let's see if we can get three. Now, if I can get somebody to get three, OMG. Can I get a three? Can I get three blinks? Oh my, wow. Wow. All right, I got another three. Can I get a three blink in the back? Can I get three? Can I get a three blink? All right, all right. We don't have that many three blinks, <laughs> okay? Now, when you're having a bowel movement, you sometimes think that you're getting rid of the previous day's food. But guess what? You're full of? Yes. That's right, because it's not the previous day, because guess what? You wrongly combined your food. And if you're eating meat, and then if, you, if you're eating meat, and you're eating it wrong, how long is it going to take at least to get that food through your system? Three days. Two to three days, right? So if you eat meat every day, and some of us eat meat more than once a day, 
What happens to meat? Meat putrefies, right? Mm. Have you ever smelled a fart on somebody who eat meat? Yes. Don't it smell like somebody died? And then they try to act like they didn't do it. They look at you. You're like, wait a minute, that was not me. Okay? That's a bad fart. Because you smelling how many days worth of bile in that colon. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm just, I know it's a shitty conversation, but we got to have it. Okay? Now, when it backs up for so long, where does it go? It sticks in your colon, but it's, it's stuck because it's, 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 it's shit in here. But, like, for so many days and weeks, where in, oh, she said years. That just scares me. In years, where does it go? It goes in your colon, but it goes out, right? You start to go this way. You know when people hold down here and they say, oh, my stomach is hurting. This ain't your damn stomach. Your stomach is up here. Your intestines is down here. It means it's a shitty situation. <laughs> That's what that means. I hope y'all forgive me. I usually don't use profanity that often, but I'm just having fun today. <laughs> okay? Thank you. So it, it, it doesn't come out within... Now, we know what digestion is now. If it doesn't come out within how many hours? It's from what time to what time? Four to who? Four to twelve? So let's... Oh, come on, come on. Use your toes. Eight hours! I heard it. If it doesn't come out within eight hours, then it's going to the next day. Now, how many of us, when you don't have a bowel movement, you just stop eating and wait for it to come out? Oh, hell no! How many of us do that? You do that? You say, I have not had a bowel movement yet. I'm not eating nothing. You, can't, you, don't, you ain't eating nothing. What if you get hungry? You got to be like, I got it. Come out, because I'm hungry. A lot of us will say, I'm about to eat. Okay? We don't count how many meals we get based upon the bowel that's actually coming out of us. And if you really think about it, you really should. If you have not had a bowel movement, and, and, and I know this is a, a crappy, 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 crappy situation that we have right now. <laughs> but if you ain't had one in like one or two days, you're in trouble. Okay? And what, do, what would be the, the logical thing to do if you have not had a bowel movement within a day or two? Stop! Stop eating! Stop eating! Stop! Okay? And then what, what should you do after you stop eating? Drink water. Liquids. Drink some water. Okay? And then, and, and, and some people do that and it still don't work. Then what can you do? Herbs, Herbs baby. What herbs will push it out? Cinnabon. Now, you know cinnamon is a strong thing now. Now, that's a laxity. Don't go nowhere and after you took some cinnamon. You might fart and it might be something else. Okay? What's a little lighter than Senna? But I'm not knocking Senna because some people need Senna. Okay? But I don't want you doing Senna all the time. Because if you do Senna all the time, guess what happens? The body says, the hell with you. I don't want to move, remove the waste myself. Just give me the Senna. The body gets lazy. So what else can we use? Dandelion. Dandelion. Cascara. Oh, we got a cascara. Anybody ever take cascara before? Have you ever cramped? Yes. That's some cramping. It works. <laughs> but that's in the family of that sin. Okay? You cramp. And then you better be close to that toilet because when it comes, it's not waiting for you. You better, you, you better be ahead of it because it's coming. Okay? But you can do okra. Right? You can do flax seeds. Right? What else? Corn juice. Who juice? Oh, girl, I got a prune juice story. Can I tell y'all a prune juice story? Because if we talking, this is a shitty conversation anyway. I had someone here from out of the country, and we were in Whole Foods, and I was getting juice, Dr. Afri was getting juice, and he was getting juice. So he was like, this prune juice looks good. So me and Dr. Afri looked at him and said, mm, he must not understand. He was like, no, you probably should get something else. <laughs> oh, no, I got an iron belly. I can drink this juice. And we're like, okay. So we're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He drinks the juice in Pittsburgh. We get to the first pit stop, and guess what? Go. The iron belly didn't come out the toilet for the next, like, six hours. <laughs> okay? He drank the whole thing. He turned it up. He, when he took it to the head. Isn't that what they say? <laughs> so prune juice does work.
but you need to really understand how things move on your system, okay? So yes, prune juice works as well. Now, there has been people who haven't had a bowel movement, they get them every three days, every four days. Some people get them once a week. Now, when it's not coming out through the proper channels that it should come out, where is it going to start to come out? It's going to come out the what? I the, huh? Have you ever, have you ever smelled shit coming out of somebody's mouth? Yes. Have they ever, those are the people that want to get right close to you and be like, hey, I got a question for you. Okay, go answer your question. You try to back it up. And when you back it up, they come forward and say, yes, but I don't want anybody to want to know. It's a secret right there. Okay? That bile comes from your intestine like sewer gas and comes out through your mouth. It's not normal to have breath that is offensive. It's not, offen it's not normal. And I know somebody in here has dated somebody with some shit smelling breath before. Tell the truth. No, I'm just playing. Ain't going there. I'm just playing. Any event you start smelling it through your mouth, what do you do? You said chew some gum. <laughs> you said call them. You call them on the phone. So after you didn't chew your gum. And, and don't talk. You go. You told them be silent. What can you do? Because some people have offensive breath and they don't know what to do about it. A lot of us don't floss correctly. That's first and foremost. I just want to get the, because you know you think everyone knows and they may not know that there's food that can stay in between your gums. Okay, and meat. When you're eating meat, you know how after you get done, you always want to stick your finger. You know the black things. Like, that was good. Well, you might not get all that meat in from between your teeth, so this, it, the smell could start coming from your gums, but when it's that stuff that is all 24-7, like it's not just a floss thing, what do you have to do? Come on, family. Okay, fasting is not a bad thing, but there's most people who won't fast, because to fast, you can't eat anything for three days. Your fast starts on the third day of no eating. It starts on the third day. It starts on the third day. And some people say, well, I'm on a juice fast. Well, if you're drinking juice, you're really not fasting because drinking is eating. It still has to go through the digestive process. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a 911. If it was me, my breast smell like, mm, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do the, the, the suppository or a colonic, an uh, enema, animal. I'm going to do an animal. I'm telling you, I'm going to do dire things. I'm going to get that bottom part out. An enema is not going to take out the whole colon. You understand? That shit is back up in here. And you know what? Let's figure out how it starts. I know she's looking like she can smell it. She like, when are we going to get off this? So you have the, the, the small intestine. The small intestine is right here in the middle. That's the small intestine. Does everybody know that? And then you have the ascending colon. Draw up. Ascending colon transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid, and then it's out. So just think, you got a back up here, which is a sigmoid. You got a back up here, which is the what? Descending. And then it's backed up here, which is what? The transverse, and it's backed up here, which is what? The ascending colon, this is a problem. And you know, a lot of people say disease starts in the colon. Mm. I mean, I can, I, I feel them. I don't, won't say I completely agree, but you definitely gonna get some disease if you don't figure that out. Mm -hmm. Passing gas a lot is just not normal. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just want you to just blink your eyes on the inside. <laughs> How many of us have a, a gas problem? Just, you know, just, you know, just bat your eyes, you know, on the inside, because you don't want to put your business out there. You don't want everybody to know your business. But if you got a gas problem, the, the sewer is backing up, okay? Now meat what? Putrefies. And what does fruit do? Ferment. So what does fermented fruit do? 
Alcohol. That, now, see, I knew somebody was going to, you know, give me a high five in there. <laughs> That's why people drink alcohol. It's fermented. What? Fruit. So you ate the fruit. You're putting, now you're wrongly combining fruit now. Fruit now. Did you know you could do that? Because some of us put apples with melons. You know, how many of us do a fruit salad? Yeah, don't? Mm hmm You didn't have a fruit salad? You don't got anybody else that had a fruit salad? Keep it real. You didn't, it's only two people in here that had a fruit salad. Okay, so when you get this fruit salad, do you say, I'm just going to eat the melons? Or do you take a scoopy and put it in a bowl and eat all of it? It doesn't, citrus fruits don't combine with what? Melons. Bananas. It's just, they just, you got to keep them in the same family. So say you combined them and you ate them. Now it's a conflict in the colon. So what's going to be the conflict? Gas. And you know, okay, now she said acid reflux. Let's talk about acid reflux. The body digestion is supposed to start, it's supposed to start in the stomach where the stomach takes off the lining of the food. Is that correct? Then the only place that digestion takes place completely is in a duodenum. Can y'all say duodenum? duodenum? Thank you. So the duodenum is connected to the stomach. Now, if your food's path, if your food passes the duodenum, then guess what? It doesn't get digested. So if you put meat and carbohydrates together and it went to the duodenum, which one is the duodenum going to digest? The carbs. Why do you think it's going to just... It's easier. So it's going to give what the pass? The meat. So the meat goes and then to the colon, right? And so then the colon has to heat up. We talking about acid reflux. The colon has to try to do something that was supposed to be done in the duodenum. You understand that? And you're doing this all the time. Then you wonder why you can't eat spicy foods. You can't do this and you can't do that. Because you've done so much violation with your food combining. You understand that the body's now starting to fight back. Okay? So it's actually heating up. And it's going back up through the digestive tract. You understand that? Okay, so how many of us really feel like we push? You feel like y'all pulling shit? Are we getting this shit worked out? Are we? Because we need to get this worked out. Okay? So the next time somebody try to tell you you full of it, you tell them, uh-uh. You full of it. Because I had my Bible with this morning. Okay? Between what hours? Before 12, 4 and 12. When somebody try to give you a heavy, when you guys get together and you want to commune with each other, and y'all want to have like that family get together at that breakfast, and y'all get the eggs and the bacon and the, and the grits. You know what? You better look at it and say, I don't know. This is a shitty situation I'm in right now. I want to eat with y'all, but this right here, I shouldn't be eating. Everything is about decision making. Everything is about decision making. You don't need me to tell you you're full of it. You don't need me to do that. You need to tell yourself, I will be full of it if I do this. Okay? That's the revolution. The revolution starts inside the body. Because once you start feeding the body good foods, then you can think well. How well do you think you are thinking if you're full of it? Have you ever just not been able to use the bathroom and think about how that felt? I know everybody in here at least once have said, my goodness, I have, my bowels have not moved yet. I mean, you can't even think right. And here come the revolution. And what you doing? Worried about a bowel movement. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. So we have education now. So when those little ones come to you, nieces and nephews and, and sons and daughters and grandmothers and grandfathers, whoever it is that you have around you, and they start to complain about pains down here, what's the first thing you're going to think of? And be nice. Be nice. Yeah. You're going to say, baby, I think you're full of it. We're going to have to do something about this. Okay? So are you ready for this revolution? You understand that if you don't get it out of you, it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt you. Why do you think they want to give you colonoscopies every year? Why? Because they know what you eat. KFC. Burger King. You got cheese. Pizzas. They know what you're eating, so they can just about time it. 
They know that this nigga is not having a bowel movement. Okay? They telling you to come in and get a test because they need that test as a reason to cut on you. And you walk in there like the, the lamb and say, what well, the doctor done told me. Well, you don't need the doctor to tell you tonight. I'm telling you. If you continue to eat the wrong way, the body will punish you immediately. And it'll come through your breath. It'll come through your underarms. Some of us are just funky. <laughs> you understand? Because the waste is trying to leave. If the waste can't come out through your urine and your bowel, it'll come out through your sweat. You know, sometimes it's just the funk is just too much. I mean, I mean sometimes you'd be like, oh, I can't even stand the smell of myself. And some of us been stinking for so long, we can't even smell ourselves no more. <laughs> Killing everybody. <laughs> You were like, I know you smell. You, and they know. <laughs> then they want to give you a hug. <laughs> we got to do something about this, okay? I love y'all. We're family. I don't want you sitting in front of somebody with a white coat and acting like this is new information. <laughs> this is not new information. Mm -hmm. You should have learned this as a child. Mm -hmm. But we, we missed, I missed it. I didn't get it. Man, I've been full of shit for a long time. <laughs> okay? They say you got to talk about yourself first. But if you don't take hold of yourself, you're going to put yourself in a situation to put your hands into people who don't give a damn about you. Okay? And then your family members, they just sit there hopeless and helpless. They can't help you. You know, they, you know you're sick and you, they got all this stuff. They put the sugar and water in your veins. What does sugar do? Robs your body of moisture, right? If you need moisture in your body and they putting sugar in there, what's going to happen to the colon? It's going to dry up like a desert. You understand that? Mm. So they just going to continuously hurt you. So I think I didn't, I think I didn't beat the shit out of you. <laughs> I think you understand. <laughs> I, send, I send my love, my concern, and my care to each and every one of you because it's you who's gonna make a difference. You're gonna go home and you're gonna be able to affect the people that you're around. Mm -hmm. I'll never see your cousins. I'll never get a chance to see your aunties. I won't be the one sitting around that, that dinner table. But you can start having a conversation at least. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for the revolution? Mm -hmm. I said, are you ready for the revolution? Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. Oh.